Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to all things Scientology. Claire is being a very big suppressive person today. <laughs> she she went with Mark to a comedy show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm left holding the bag, but I am super happy because I have a very special guest with us tonight. And her name is Christy Colbrin Rinder. Welcome, Christy. Hi. <laughs> I am so happy to have you with us tonight. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yes. So we're going to go ahead and um, get into your whole story. And I'm going to ask a lot of questions. And people are going to put a lot of questions in the chat. And um, so you're going to have a lot coming your way. <laughs> because Someone this already is very... said, OMG, she got a mic. <laughs> she did. She got a mic. I got a mic. You... <laughs> and earphones, right? You've got the yes. whole setup now. I got a setup. I'm here. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. And um, so, but what we're going to do first is call out the people who um, are uh, here from all over the world. And um, already I saw people say that they were here from Brazil and Sweden and Clearwater, Long Island and Wisconsin and uh Look at all this, Westminster, Maryland, and uh, look at all these different places, you guys, Idaho. Um, so Texas, and it, can, it's, it keeps going, so I have to look away, otherwise I'll just continuously. <laughs> Pennsylvania, Colorado. Anyway, I'm so Clearwater, happy that you're- Clearwater, Georgia. <laughs> yeah, and Clearwater, Pennsylvania. Yeah, clear, there's Clearwaters in every Everywhere. town. <laughs> <laughs> apparently. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's a lot of fun. And I thank everybody for being with us tonight. And um, we're going to start with a week in review. So here we go. A week in review for 13 September 2023. So I did a video on justice is served. Danny Masterson gets life without the possibility of parole for 30 years. Um, and this, this is something that is major, major news in the Scientology world, major, um, because justice is served. I mean, how long have we been trying to get any form of justice when Scientology so is related? Yes. Yeah, and we like getting a win feels few and far between. So this is an amazing, an amazing feat accomplishment yes. and so well so needed so yeah needed. i mean what the jane does have gone through for so yeah. decades for yeah. decades um with the help of scientology um dragging right. it out and making it impossible to get justice well i'm sorry scientology but you didn't win on covering up this crime and um you know it has a special significance when you have a similar situation you know as a as a young person getting raped at 14 years old and then i was told that i was in a lower condition and that person was never um reported to the police my parents were never even told and um that person ended up going on to be a serial child rapist mm. unfortunately and um finally some justice did happen because his brother put him behind bars after uh, he assaulted his eight-year-old daughter. So anyway, that's Scientology covering up crimes instead of seeing that they're reported to the authorities and getting proper action taken. And so, um, so well done to the Jane Doe's for despite all um, fair game tactics and everything else, they persisted and yeah. they got justice. Yeah, and it wasn't easy. No, definitely not. And it's not over. Mm -mm. That's the other thing. It is not over because now we've got, I mean, Scientology, what do they got? Five cases going on right now. Like we've got, there's um, another one on um, sex trafficking. There's another one on child labor in Australia. There's, of course, Leah's case. Mm -hmm. There's the grand jury obstruction of justice 
because Scientology could not restrain themselves. And, um, you know, the one covering the stalking of the Jane Doe's. So, yeah, Scientology's got their hands full. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first video. That was my reaction to some justice taking place. Um, I continue to uh, narrate my book with my added commentary, and I have lots of added commentary <laughs> and reactions to different things and little inside information of uh, what went on. But I did chapter eight, which it covered new era of management. And I did chapter nine, which was up and down the totem pole. Um, yeah, <laughs> lots of up and downs. <laughs> um, but, and the feedback on, um, on narrating the book with my added commentary is really super good. And I'll be compiling that into an overall audiobook afterwards. Wow, afterwards. that's exciting. <laughs> yes. Okay, another thing in the weekend review, I did a video with a live stream with Erin Grady, which is Janice Gillum Grady's daughter, her beautiful daughter, and it was a Christian conversation. Um, I had just found out that she was a Christian, and um, the likelihood of me becoming a Christian after um, 27 years in a cult it was like almost zero, and then she grew up with two parents who had been in a cult who who finally escaped and for her to um, become a Christian was highly unlikely. So that was a, a fun conversation. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I, I think that um, she is just such a beautiful girl. I've known her for a woman now, and I, I've known her for so long. She was such a small little girl, but now she's just a beautiful woman. Um, I have coming up tomorrow night. Um, this is with Becoming Outlaws. It's my friend, um, Ken McMullen, and he is going, I've been on his channel before, and we're going to do another um, interview coming up. Former executive over Scientology Celebrity Center. Yeah, it's really going to get reaction on the latest going on in Scientology. Um, I want to promote what Claire got done this week, even though she's not here to talk about it. But um, there is a live stream that Mark did on Aaron's channel and on his channel as well, which was Scientology and Panic Mode after Masterson Conviction. So they talked all about that, and it was very interesting. And there was a, another episode of um, Where is Shelley with Karen Schles Presley. And um, so this is the second one that they did together. And I put a copy of Karen's book up here so you can see it. Um, she wrote Escaping Scientology, an insider's true story. So that's for anyone who would like to see that. And then let's see. Okay, so now I've got photo of the week. <laughs> this is funny. Okay, you ready? Ready. I want to see it. <laughs> In my book, I talk about jelly, which was a beagle that David Miscavige had, and he would put jelly oh in a commander's outfit oh my God. and said that she could sniff out crimes. So, <sighs> you know, some people had to even salute her. <laughs> I'm not even. And Honestly, was, I would rather salute Jelly than, than <laughs> David Miscavige. I would, any day, I would take Jelly over it. Over David Miscavige. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and um, there was even a point where I, I wrote it in my book, and that's, you know, a lot of people had a reaction to this, uh, which was, um, you know, I walk into the conference room where David Miscavige is there with Jelly, and she lets out a little bit of a bark. You know, it was kind of like a hello kind of bark, oh but no, no, that meant that I had crimes, right? Of course. And uh, I almost started, cr I started cracking up, you know, and he's like looking at me like, why are you laughing? Because I'm serious, you know? Anyway, so I had to just put little Jelly's face in there <sighs> or a dog that looks like Jelly. <laughs> okay. And then here's the other thing. Last week, <clears throat> we were talking with um, Mark Headley and he said that he, th he that the prototype for the new e-meter, the latest version of the e-meter was the Easy Bake Oven, right? <laughs> so Yes, it looks yeah, like but, it, it looks like okay. it. So I did a side-by-side, -side. here you go. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> was Scientology's prototype for their e-meter, the Easy Bake Ooh, Oven? Yes. I mean, check that out. <laughs> yep. 
people were commenting, which one's which? Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I hadn't seen that picture of the Easy Bake Oven, but boy, does it sure represent it. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so my husband picked the Scientology word of the week. And the word of the week this week is overt. Mm. The real world definition of overt is done openly, plain to see. Like her intentions for promotion were overt or overt, however you want to say it. Scientology's definition is an act of omission or commission which does the most harm to the greatest number of dynamics. Dynamics are your urge to survive through different things, especially the group, which is Scientology. And then the sentence is, reporting internal crimes to police is not only an overt in Scientology, but a high crime. And we specifically picked this definition today because of the fact that Danny Master Masterson can remain a Scientologist in good standing. Um, and meantime, the people who are going to the police or reporting the abuse taking place are the enemies because it's got an overt a contra survival act in Scientology's opinion is what benefits them or not. And so that's their own definition and it's pretty creepy and it's dangerous. So we wanted to highlight that um, so that people can really understand that it's when somebody says it's contra survival to the greatest good, it's only about what's the greatest good for Scientology. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. So now we have the quote of the week. Okay. So this was picked by a subscriber and it says, resolve to be tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic with the striving and tolerant of the weak and the wrong sometime in life. You will have been all of these. George Washington Carver. Very smart man. Very smart man. That's a beautiful quote. And then I've got a comment of the week. YouTube comment of the week. This is from Marty de Gregorio. And by the way, you win a book for this comment. It says, what Scientology really is? One, a criminal mob. Two, an organization to further DM sadistic personality. Three, a study in humiliation. Four, a place to physically abuse anyone other than DM and TC. Five, a destroyer of humanity and ethics. Six, the destruction of families and any emotions normally felt by humans. Seven, a safe place for abuse. Well, I couldn't agree more. I added a little thing to that when I read it. And I said, that is granted full tax exempt status to use their billions to go after and destroy anyone who speaks out against them. Thank you, IRS. Yes, so uh, if you're watching, I hope you're watching. Congratulations on being picked as the quote of the week. I think that summarized exactly how I was feeling when I read it. <laughs> Yeah. And so um, just send me an email with your contact information and I'll get a book sent out to you. Okay. So the next thing on here is show and tell, which I received from Lisa. I received here. I got to make this small. Um, these earrings that she handmade. She's got this dragonfish handmade goods uh, store, but she, so if you can see this, this is a honey jar with a little so spoon cute. hanging on it and, and then uh, a bee on a leaf. And then there's a bee pin with it. And then I also got my SP TV little bag, <laughs> carry bag with all the logos on it, you know, and she, it's all repurposed stuff like from jeans and from sheets and things like that. And she makes all these um, items, which are just fun. So thank you, Lisa, if you're li listening. Thank you so That's much. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And the next thing is subscribe to our YouTube channel. So mine is at Queen BSP, but also subscribe to uh, Mike Rinder's channel um, at Mike Rinder. And uh, I think that's what it is, right? I think Mike so. Rinder. Yeah. 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 So um, subscribe to both of our channels and, um, you know, we'll, we'll be thanking you for that. And then that's it on the, um, 
on the week in review. Now for the good stuff, we're going to get right into your whole life and experience in Scientology and everything like that. So where to start? <laughs> yeah, where to start? Um, I mean, I, I was born into Scientology. So there's, that's it. My whole life from day one oh. was Scientology. Oh. My parents were on staff before I was born. And then they kind of left staff right around the time I was born. So I was from the minute I was born, that was it. It was Scientology, everything Scientology. And I went and did um, like, you know, as kids, we were brought to the org to do communication seminars and like at like six, seven years old. So the indoctrination oh. starts very, very early well, for those yeah. of us that were born into it. Yeah. Wow. And so did your family ever join the Sea Org? Was it? No. So my mother trained as high as you can go as an auditor um, without joining the Sea Org. So she was a class eight auditor um, mm -hmm. at AOLA in Los Angeles. And my dad was also very highly trained. I think he was a briefing course auditor and he was a cramming officer. And that's, they met in LA at the, at the PAC base. And, um, no. So he had taken LSD, which is a disqualification. So they never joined right. the Sea Org. Okay. Um, I think had he not taken LSD, they probably would have, but, um, so they didn't. And, um, but yeah, so we were, me and my brother and sister were raised in Scientology from, you know, from the day we were born and everything right. in our life was Scientology, Scientology, Scientology. <laughs> did you have to go to a Scientology school too, or did you have any normality in your life whatsoever? I did eventually go to public school, which was nice because there was some normality there, but I went to some of the same schools that I think Mark Headley went to. So I went to, I don't know if he went to all the same schools as me, but we went, I went to pumpkin school, which is like a famous preschool that a bunch of little kids went to in LA, a bunch of other second gen Scientologists will be like, yes, me too. I went to pumpkin right. school and then Apple school, <laughs> which was oh, another pumpkin. Scientology school in LA. <laughs> and then, um, so I went to both of those, which are very well known amongst the young, you know, sort of second gen Scientologists. And then after mm -hmm. that, um, I actually went to, to public school, thankfully. So I went to okay. public school for all of elementary school from like kindergarten through, or maybe no, not even kindergarten, second, second grade through sixth grade, I went to regular elementary school and I was doing great in regular mm. elementary school. And then as soon as it was like, okay, now we have to go to junior high. My family was worried, right? Cause now we're getting into like the teen years and drugs and whatever can happen at, at that time period. And so that was when I went sent to Delphi. And so mm. I went to Delphi for Ugh. the rest of my schooling, which wasn't very much before I was recruited. Um, so let's let's tell people what Delphi is. So that is a Scientology school. And is it a, like yeah. a live in thing? Like they send you away from home? Well, there's two. There's actually three Delphi. So there's one in oh, Oregon, okay. which is a which is like a boarding school. So you can go and live there. There's one in L.A., which is just a regular school you go to during the day. And then there's mm -hmm. one here in Clearwater. I was in L.A., so okay. I. I didn't, I didn't live there, but I was there every day. Um, pretty much all of the staff, I wouldn't say every single staff member, but the majority of the staff members that work there are um, Scientologists. Um, some of them are ex Sea Org members or ex staff members who left and now they want to do something, you know, still in the community. So they work at the Delphi school. Um, all the children there are indoctrinated into using the L. Ron Hubbard study technology. So you have to use this technology in school at Delphi, which, you know, is, I don't know if you guys have talked about it already, but you know, you have to learn how to clear any misunderstood words. You can't go past a misunderstood word. You have to look them up in the dictionary, every single mm -hmm. word. There's, there's more to it, but. <laughs> oh, there's a lot. There's clay, yeah. use clay, demonstrate clay all demos. the major, um, you know, factors with clay yeah. and things like that. I mean, let's get into the 21st century, guys. It's ridiculous. And they even find ways to <laughs> sneak in a little bit of Scientology without you really knowing it because they say they're non-secular. So Delphi supposedly is non-secular and they don't teach oh, any that's a, lie. a total lie. They, they're like, we don't <laughs> teach any Scientology, but there were definitely courses um, and everything is done as courses. So just like in Scientology and in, in a Scientology org, you do a course, you have a supervisor, it's not a teacher. 
Um, yep. It's not a teacher teaching you with a chalkboard. You're kind of doing your right. own self-paced learning with courses and check sheets and all of that goes on at Delphi. And yeah. um, and then plus Delphi is under Applied Scholastics and Applied right. Scholastics is in the ABLE, which is Association for Better Living and Education, which uh, I was the watchdog committee member for ABLE for right. about a year. But um, yeah. so that's all in Scientology. Totally. <laughs> It's, it's a, it's a Scientology breeding ground for future Sea Org members. <laughs> it's right. really, Big I mean, recruiting pool, huge. Totally. Pool. And, um, you know, that I'm trying to remember what some of the courses were, but there was a course we did, I think it was called like the thinking course. So they like changed the names, but it was really logic. And it was the L. Ron Hubbard logic, like L. Oh, Ron God. Hubbard has written about, you know, you know how he, I don't remember what oh. is the data oh. series. He's written about the data series and it's all about logic and, conclusions and research and anyway so you learn some of this at delphi so there are yeah. sneaky little courses that they stick in there which are basically l ron hubbard you know his technology and his writings um mm -hmm. made to sound like they might be education for normal for the rest of the world but it's really sneaky Scientology. No, it is it is you know because there were projects that were done to secularize quote unquote Elrond oh, Hubbard's technology so that yeah. it can be used in these, you know, applied scholastics. So you would take something, take out and modify the words that would make it seem like Scientology or whatever, just make some modifications, but it's still the technology, yes. you know? Yeah. yeah. And I think there was a, some version of the way to happiness course that we did. <laughs> there were definitely, I wish I could remember the mod. I'm, I'm kind of happy that I can't remember them. Yeah. <laughs> I love it when I'm like, I forgot, I forgot all the Scientology stuff. But yeah, there were courses there. There were, there were a number of them that were not just like normal things you'd learn in school. They were Scientology under, you know, sort of under the radar, hidden little pieces mm -hmm. of Scientology. Um, but even still, you know, even without Delphi, there was just the influence of my parents because my parents were hardcore, dedicated, totally, totally 100 percent onboard Scientologists. They did right. every piece of auditing and training you could do. They they were just, you know, so and that was a huge influence in our lives as children. We were raised as, you know, Scientologists. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So after. And so, yeah, after Delphi, um, I was at Delphi for a few years in L.A. I did go to Delphi, Oregon for one summer, um, which is where I met Heather Smith Levin, which is Aaron's wife. Oh, and her and yeah. I have been friends since I was since I was like 15. So I've known her you for know, a really long not, time. <laughs> I, I go out with you two and I've never known that. I had yeah, no idea. She, she was Delphi too, huh? Yeah, she, she was Delphi. Were... So Heather and I have been friends since we were teenagers. <laughs> Funny. Wow. Um, and I knew Mark very had Mark Headley very well too. Like I, we weren't friends cause he's a couple years older than me. And, and when you're in school years, you know, that's, that kind of matters. So he was a, yeah. a couple grades above me, but I definitely knew who he was. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so that's Delphi, but that's it, Gavin Potter is the Sea Org member who recruited me for the Sea Org and Gavin Potter came to the Delphi school campus in his full class, a Sea Org uniform Oh and boy. was on the property, you know, flirting and talking to young girls and trying very hard to pull us into the Sea Oregon. And that that's that environment was not a safe place. I mean, if you were if you no. were at that school, you were definitely, um, you know, easy prey for Sea Org recruiters. <sighs> well, he's in big trouble for exactly that type of action right now. Big yep. trouble. Mm -hmm. So may the light shine on this. That's really, yes. that's really something. Plus you're like a captive audience there, which is gross. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, so you have the shark swimming in the pool where all the yeah. little fishes are. <laughs> and wow. the way they describe it to you, it's like when you're, you know, when you're already a Scientology kid, you think Scientology is everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and this Sea Org member comes and he's at the top of the top and they make it seem like it's just amazing. It's wonderful. It's the best thing you could ever do. I mean, it's like, I don't know how to describe it or compare it, but it's like just the, the heroes are coming down to talk to us little people. Like that's how you think yeah. of, that's how you see it as a little kid, right? You're just a I kid. Know. 
And you're just looking at this guy like, wow, he's got this cool uniform. And some of the pieces of that have an effect on you because you're a child and you're like this uniform. The uniform alone is like, you're like, wow, this uniform's cool. And he's like really impressive. And, you know, the way he, yes, the way he presents himself, the way he talks. And you're like, okay, wow, this is this is important and I need to learn about this and maybe Mm -hmm. this is what I should do. And you're not really being given any other career opportunities. Like you're not being shown other cool things. You're being shown this Sea Org, and like, this is, this is where you're going to wind up. And so you're like, okay, well, I guess that's where I'm going to wind up. That's where all the important, you know, jobs are being done. And so exactly, it's very easy to get recruited and join the Sea Org as a born into Scientologist. It's kind of your destiny. (laughs) <laughs> did he actually re uh have you joined then like was he your recruiter he was my recruiter i had you know numerous recruiters that talked to me over the years but he was the he was the bigger the most you know the guy who never gave up on me and just kept mm. just kept on trying to recruit me right he originally right. got me to sign a contract when i was only 14 and he oh, tried boy. to get me to actually arrive into this year when i was 14 but um, but both of my parents were out of town on um, doing Scientology services. So I lived in mm-hmm. LA. One of them was at Flag here in Clearwater, and the other one was on the Free Winds. And we were being taken care of by some friends of our family. And mm-hmm. he thought this was the perfect opportunity to get me to <laughs> arrive because my parents weren't around. They couldn't stop it. And he was like, we'll just send them a fax and we'll let them know you're joining the Sea Org. <laughs> Oh and, my God! You're 14 um, years old, I'm, and he yeah. says we're gonna fax. We're gonna your send parents? them a fax, and nobody, you know, and and they wouldn't really be allowed to stop me because they were there doing services under Scientology's control, right? So if they tried yeah. to stop me, he could call the ethics officer at the org mm-hmm. at the organization where they were and tell the ethics officer, "Hey, you need to pull these parents in because they're stopping this girl who wants to join the Sea Org." Yeah, yeah. Um, so luckily. <laughs> Luckily, I is in my great wisdom as a 14 year old realized this is not a good idea. <laughs> oh, good. Um, so you, you can know, feel it in your bones. I just right? was like, this is just cr-. he was like Thursday before two. You know, I don't know if you oh, talked God. about that already, but right. Thursday before 2 p.m. That's when the statistics for the week end every week. So every Seward member, every staff member is trying to get whatever they have to get done by 2 p.m. on Thursday. So, so it can count for that week. And yeah. he was trying to he said, I'm going to come pick you up. On Thursday morning at like nine o'clock, I'm going to pick you up. We're going to bring you in Thursday before two. We're going to get you here. And I was like, I woke up Thursday morning and I was like, (laughs) and I, you know, and I have a little brother and a little sister. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, I don't know. This just doesn't feel right. I'm not, I'm not ready. Like I I wasn't saying I'm not going to do this at all, but I was like, I'm not ready to do this today. I'm 14. My parents are out of town. I loved my parents to pieces. They're like, I adored them. I was like, I think I, you know, I, so I actually had the guts to call them up and say, no, I'm not arriving today. I'm not doing it today. (laughs) Thank goodness. Thank goodness. But, um, but then two years later, it was a done deal and I was in the Sea Org. So, yeah. So what, what happened with that? How did that end up happening and where'd you start? So he, he worked at Bridge Publications, which is the organization that does all the books, printing, sales, marketing, all of that. Um, And then two years later, some of my friends had joined the Sea Org that I was, that I knew from Delphi and, um, and also a boy that I had sort of had a little fling with at Delphi. His name was Colby. He joined mm-hmm. the Sea Org as well, and um, Uh-oh. and so the stars yeah, were aligning. Yeah, <laughs> and so then Colby and and Gavin both came to see me, and we're like, okay, you know, you signed your contract two years ago. You didn't want to arrive. Maybe now is the right time, and just put a lot of pressure on me. And I, I did it. I was like, okay, right. well, maybe now's the time. Now I'm a little older. Now I'm sixteen. Yeah, uh, you know, and. It, like it's I said, it was super young. It's so still, young. To make such a life decision. And and your parents were fine on it? My mother was actually very much not not all about this. She did not oh, like is this. That right? Yeah, oh, she okay. did not. But my dad, my dad handled her. He just oh. yeah. So um yeah. And um I was gonna say something and I lost my train of thought. What was it? Anyway. So 16. Yeah. So oh, by this 16. Time, That's what I was gonna yeah. say. My mm-hmm. son is 16 right now. 
my oh. little my little baby Shane. Oh my God, I can't <laughs> even picture it. And I just, I, there is no way in hell that he, <sighs> he, you know, he is the little male version of me at that age. It yeah. should be in the Sea Org, should be no. leaving home and joining a cult for their entire life, signing <sighs> a billion year contract to do this for the rest of eternity. And at that time you were making a decision also that you weren't going to have children. You were making the decision because at that time you were basically told, <sighs> Sea Org members don't have children. And if you have children, you're going to get kicked out and you're joining. So you're saying, I'm not going to have children. And then you can't make that choice at 16. That's ridiculous. It's disgusting. It's yeah, so, so, I mean, for anyone who doesn't know, like I, I joined at 16. Um, yes, we have that in common. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we both joined at 16. And my mom, you know, was forced like, you know, like your parents you're going to get in trouble if you don't yeah. sign away your ch your child to Scientology because it's the greatest good for Scientology and Scientology is the only salvation for mankind. So <clears throat> cough her up. And um, so Sea Org members with their beautiful uniforms came and, you know, raise your right hand because we're swearing you in to and signing a billion year contract and everything like that. So, yeah, 16 years old, right after my 16th birthday, I was uh, in the Sea Org. And I never was able to have children because it was a policy in, in the Sea Org not to have children. So on Scientology. Yeah, big time. <laughs> yeah. So I can't imagine your son walking in there. Can you and imagine? Saying, you know, Shane. No, can you imagine? My whole life. Your whole life. Just <laughs> sign it away and okay, you're not going to have children. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to know a real, the real world at all. You're not going to know. Right. And by the way, take his car keys away because he's not going to try. Yeah, that would kill him. That would kill him. <laughs> no, it was. Yeah, it, it, that is seriously the thing. Like now that I'm a parent and I'm seeing my my children grow and, and also the other thing about 16. Think about it. I mean, if you understand the science of like human beings, our brains are not fully developed until the age of 25. Like we are continually, yes. to, continually growing throughout our adolescence. At 25, our brains are like, OK, they're pretty much fully formed. Yeah. Before that, we're, we're, we're little zealots with no logic and no idea. And anything that flies in front of us is the latest thing is exciting and new. And let's go do this yeah. and let's go to a party and let's, and let's join the Sea Org. I mean, we don't yeah. know what we're doing. We're, no. we're children. We're kids. It's, that's right. It's just, it's just, it's, it's such a crime to me that, that kids are being recruited like that is just so infuriating and By i the just time can't ever imagine my own children like now that i'm a parent letting them do that i would just there was no. nothing in the world that i would that I would make me let them do that <laughs> yeah. so so here's the thing that's so important is that we're talking about this so that people can get educated on it because they need to know that don't you know, not that a lot of people would, but like sometimes Scientologists look at our videos and under the radar and they need to know, look, you know, when you get in there, okay, as a 16 year old, for example, I was sent to Europe by myself. So I'm, and then I traveled around Europe and I didn't know currency. I didn't know customs. I didn't know anything. Right. And I'm by myself, a 16 year old girl traveling, getting lost in Paris and some guy picking me up and driving me all around the city, total stranger, you know, and trying to right. get me to, I mean, it was just ridiculous. And yeah. so that's what happens. They're so irresponsible. And I think I did the RPF two or three times by the time I turned 25 years old. So my brain wasn't developed, but I, <laughs> yeah, I'd been around the block. <laughs> yeah. I mean, teenagers, especially, I just think teenagers are, young people are young they're learning they're just they're not ready to make a decision to sign a billion year contract nobody should right. ever you know but anyway so yeah, yeah yeah so anyway it's good education to let people know just like really you know protect your children um yeah because sending them into scientology they'll be eaten alive and um yeah i was 16 years old when i was sent to the rpf the first time um, and the RPF is the Rehabilitation Project Force. It's Scientology slave labor camp. And I have nightmares about that still to this day. So anyway. Okay. Yeah. So you signed and you were 16 now, right? You signed I was up 16. for your bill. I, I joined the Sea Org. Um, I joined with my best friend, Nicole, who I knew since I was 12. We joined together on the same day. We did the EPF together. 
uh, we were like all excited and s super sad that Nicole is still there. And I, oh, I geez. like lost her to, she's uh, still, she's still at bridge too. Like I moved oh around God. and went all kinds of places and did all kinds of things in the Sea Org and she's still at bridge. Well, last I knew she was still at bridge. Yeah. Um, Nicole, she's Nicole Toffer. She's married to what's his name can't think of it but anyway yeah um <clears throat> she was nicole arno but anyway so yeah so i was yeah. at bridge for a little bit and then i eventually and bridge bridge is responsible for the publications of l ron hubbard books That's so right. everything to do with printing them and distribution uh, yep. is a, a pu it's called publications so bridge publications bridge publications yeah yeah <clears throat> i was there for i don't know a year or two and then i got i don't know how much detail do you want to hear about all this do you want me to well, go into it yeah, yeah just tell yeah definitely this is this is the first time that you've really gotten to tell your story very publicly <laughs> so let's cover all the bases you know it's not like we have someplace else to go yeah it's it's really important to be able to tell your story well, like a couple of other things that I just thought of about it is the other thing about like being recruited at that age is the false promises that you're told at 16. Like, OK, so I was in the middle of my pro TRs course, which is the training routines, basically communication skills course that you do mm -hmm. to become an auditor. Um, yeah. And I was in the middle of that course and totally promised, yes, you'll absolutely be able to finish it. And I never went back to it. And I was told I was going to be posted in HCO, which is like, you know, the how do you describe HCO, Amy? Well, the, it's the personnel department, personnel and ethics department. Right. Um, and it's know, sort of it's, like it's considered, elite. It's considered it's elite. elite. Right. So mm -hmm. they give you all these false promises. You're going to do this. You're going to go here. It's going to be amazing. Mike, Mike told me the same thing. He was promised he was going to train to be an executive and then he was going to be sent back to Australia. Never went back to Australia oh, ever, <laughs> right? Oh, um, they'll so tell you what you, whatever tell you, you want to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all the things I was told didn't happen. I got posted in Treasury, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Treasury. I was all disappointed. <laughs> like I could do a lot better than Treasury. And my little, you know, my little ego self at sixteen, <laughs> feeling very hurt by being posted in Treasury. Um, You're gonna so do account files. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> But I did well in Treasury and I was there for, a, I don't know, a couple of years. And then I got recruited to go into CMO. Um, uh -huh. So the Commodore's Messenger Org International Extension Unit, um, which you later were in. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, so I was still in LA. I, I got put into CMO briefly. I don't, some of this, I feel like it's going to be down too much into the weeds, but um, I, 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 I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, I stayed there for a little bit and then yeah. um, then I got busted. Then I went back. They put me back on the EPF. Um, OK, so that's kind of an interesting story. So uh -huh. um, I got busted because they were doing an investigation to uh, I don't know exactly what they were investigating, but they decided that I was the who. I was the problem. We don't know what, <laughs> and but it was you. <laughs> what they were investigating, all I know is they did this thing called a rollback. And a rollback oh, is okay. where they put you on an e-meter and they ask you, where did you, um, like, where did you come up with this? Or where did you hear this information? Is that right, Amy? Is that what they ask in a rollback? Um, yeah. So it, the theory is that uh, any enemy line, like the food is bad or, you know, you we don't get paid enough. That's considered an enemy line. The theory is that every enemy line goes back outside of the organization to like a CIA agent or something like that. And so you roll back who was the first person until you find out who the first person was and, that said and it. And it was me. I was the one. <laughs> they rolled it back and it was me. And the big terrible thing that I did was that so when I first joined the Sea Org, I, I, I said already earlier, I was very close to my parents. We had a very tight relationship. And at some point, I had made the mistake of telling my mom as a young 16-year-old that I was so excited that I stayed up all night long and I didn't go to sleep. And isn't that, isn't that cool? Because in the Sea Org, that's the thing. You stay up all night long and you work so hard. And like as a young Sea Org member, you're like, wow, this is cool. I did my first all-nighter. Can you imagine yeah. being excited about that? But no. that's that's the brainwashing of a 16-year-old Sea Org member who's all excited about, I did my first all-nighter, I stayed up all night, I didn't get any sleep, and it was so cool, and I told my mom. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> I told my mom, bad idea. So I told my mom about it because I was excited and I thought it was cool. And she wrote a knowledge report. Oh, <laughs> so like a standard Scientologist. <laughs> she wrote a knowledge report because she thought that it was not okay that a 16 year old was staying up all night and not getting her sleep, which is true. I shouldn't have yeah. been, but you know, um, <laughs> So, uh, okay. So I, so, so this, when this happened, I was then told very sternly, you do not tell your parents anything. You, you don't oh, talk to, like, really? This, yes. I was told like, shut your mouth, stop yeah. telling your mom and dad things. And I was, mm. and it was so hard for me. I was like, what? Like they're yeah. my mom and dad. Like my whole yeah. life is like, they're my best friends. I, oh we God. were so close and they're, and they're Scientologists and yeah. I can't talk to them. I can't tell them anything. And yeah. I was like, Oh, I, my heart was like, it, it was just really hard for me. So several months go on and eventually I decided bullshit on this. I can't tell my parents thing. And I go back to telling them whatever kind of, whatever I want. Right. Like I just yeah. decided I don't really care that they are telling me that I can't do this because it's hurting my, my heart and I'm going to, and so I kind of quietly sneak around the rules and tell them things I want to tell them. Um, <laughs> and so, and so then another person in the Sea Org named Vanessa was, I, you know, apparently I had told her this, that I, that I, was free in my communication with my parents. And she got the idea oh, no. that she could be free in her com communication with her mother uh -uh. and started telling her mother things. And it resulted in who knows what she told her mother something that she wasn't supposed to. And when they rolled it back, it came back to me. I was the source oh, no. <laughs> of this big problem where young girls in the Sea Org were wildly telling their parents things <laughs> that they weren't supposed to tell them. So, and it's a good point. It's a good point because severing your line with your family is really important in the Sea Org because you don't want an outside influence, even though they consider themselves Scientologists or whatever, you want no outside influence into the operations of the Sea Org. So, right. and so you yeah. were the who. I was the who because I had a big mouth and I wanted mm -hmm. to, and I loved my parents and I wanted to talk to them. <laughs> so oh, this was my horrible crime. You bad person. <laughs> oh my so God. I was busted off of my post. I was You busted. got busted for I got completely busted off of my post and I didn't go to the RPF. Thankfully, I went to the EPF, which which is not as bad, but it's still yeah. not. It's still like, you know, you're busted. You like you are yeah. on a post and now you're and not you're on doing a post. And, and you do deck work, deck work, physical labor, and you basically have to go back to the basic training to learn how to be a Sea Org member again before you're let yeah. back in to complete the, you know, you complete the EPF. It's the Estates Project Force. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So I was busted for talking, having a big mouth. And um, <laughs> and then Your parents. Yeah. And then um, let's see. And then I went back and became an MAA at ITO, which is the International Training Org, where they train the outer org trainees. So, so all and the an MAA is a Master, Master at Arms, Arms, which is the ethic. The it's person officer. responsible for ethics in yeah. the organization, mm -hmm. right? So I became an ethics officer there, which I didn't deal with the Sea Org members though. I dealt with the outer org trainees. So those are the oh. people that are coming from the Class Five org. So like your local Tampa org and your local whatever LA org sends yeah. trainees to this international training org where they get trained on administrative technology of right. Scientology. Yeah. Um, so there's all these trainees there doing different, you know, qu courses. And I was the, I was the MAA at the time. Um, mm -hmm. and that lasted for a few months. And then that was where I, and I was doing fine there. Things were going okay. That was where I got selected to be part of the command teams that you and I were both a part of. <laughs> yes. Um, so that yeah, was, so that was a, I had just done the, um, chapter on a new era of management on my channel. So if anyone wants to check that out, they can, but um, that was chapter eight, a new era of management. And Christy played a major role in the new command teams that are firing out. And I wanna show you a picture of that, everyone. You can see this, these are the command teams, command team members that were part of the whole command team evolution. And 
you can see me kind of in the center there with the red around it and then Christy down there on in the first row all the way far right uh, with the red around it too. So look how young you look there. I, I was 19 in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm the youngest you one. Young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or yeah, maybe not, probably, but close to. <laughs> yeah, you probably were the youngest one there maybe. Mm -hmm. But um, you were squeaky clean qualified. So I got you approved to be on the command team. Then what happened? <laughs> you came up lines. You, you yeah, got to, so yeah. I, I got to go up to the international base um, and I was there for probably three, I don't know, three to four or five, five months. I don't remember when, yeah. maybe I was definitely there over like Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, all well. So yeah, so it was longer because we didn't leave until March. So yeah, I was probably yeah. there six months or so. Yeah. And that was definitely interesting because that was where I really, you know, for sure, having never been there and not ever, I, I, and I was never posted there. I was just there as a, a trainee, um, mm -hmm. but I got to see it. I got to see what you and Mike and Claire and Mark all know and all talk about. Yes. I got to see it from sort of an outsider's perspective because I wasn't posted there. Yeah. I was just there as a visitor. And so I was sort of in some ways kind of protected because I wasn't in, I wasn't producing a, on a job. I was just there training, learning, getting ready to be fired out on yeah. the team. And we I tried to keep everybody kind of corralled a little bit so that you didn't get to see too much of the internal noise and right. stuff going on. Yes, but we did see some of it. <laughs> I'm sure you did. I mean, um, David yeah. Miscavige can't help himself because, you know, he also wanted to show you guys who was boss type of thing. He really well, did. Yeah. And, and well, he did show oh, it ahead. to us. He made it very, very crystal clear. Um, yeah, there were there were numerous times where we were pulled into various meetings where we were all sat in a room with you and all the other senior executives with Miscavige at the head, like surrounding us in like a big you staring at us with, you know, like into our souls to like, you know, see if we were committing any crimes or had any secrets and we were all being put on. We, we all got put on an e-meter to see if we had dirty needles and if we had secrets. And um, it was I used definitely... to hate that because we would constantly be told to put the trainees on the e-meter, you know, mm -hmm. because number one, the e-meter is just like, does it work? I don't think so. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, like now I've got a list of nine of my trainees who all supposedly have ethics situations because their e-meter wasn't reacting properly. And so some of them I have to replace. I mean, it's not easy. <laughs> so yeah. I used to hate that when that happened. I'm glad oh. I wasn't someone you had to replace. I was, no, I you, was... you were just an angel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it was not like, it was not, okay, so it wasn't just that they were looking at us. They, they were saying, so Miscavige came in and we had this meeting that I'm talking about and he basically said, that there are SPs in this group and there are SPs on the, on the international base here. And the SPs are going to get found because the reason you guys haven't been sent out and the reason why it's, this whole evolution is taking so long is because of the SPs and we're going to find them. <laughs> and I'm like, we're sitting there. I'm 19. I'm this little girl. Like, holy shit, what's going on? This is, it's this is daily life at the end. And, and you guys are used scouting. to this and I've never seen this before. So I'm like, okay, you know, right. SPs. Yeah. Wow. Um, so anyway, <laughs> because like at that point in time, I'm like, SPs are rare. You know, they don't, they don't just yeah. run around willy nilly anywhere. You don't just see them in your, in your training room, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. how, that's how I thought. But um, right. anyway, so apparently there were in his eyes, some SPs and those SPs were found and removed from the training program. And that was when I saw them remove a couple of international executives from their posts, including um, Mark Yeager. He was removed from his post. He was the com the commanding officer of the Commodore's Messenger Org. I don't know if yes. these are things w that we should. Yeah, the yeah, WDC chairman, watchdog committee member, uh, yeah. over all the watchdog committee members. And um, long term, I mean, he was on that for decades and also was a messenger for L. Ron Hubbard. And David Miscavige decided that he was a true SP, suppressive yeah. person. And, um, you know, also David Miscavige is like, he would go and he would just like look at somebody and like beam into their space and then decide, okay, you're an SP. 
<laughs> literally anytime we were doing anything sometimes we would go around the base and be like okay today you get to learn how to work in this room and we would be like in the landlord office oh, which is I where they do we would be oh. in the landlord office like learning about what happens in the landlord well, office that's and be right. like so terrified that miscavige might walk in the room and oh. if you blinked wrong he might tell you you're the sp yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I'm just sitting in here like, okay, I'm just learning. I don't know what's going on. And what, how could I possibly do something wrong? But you can, you can do something wrong. Oh, just yeah. by existing just by oh, yeah. being in a room where he comes in and he doesn't like you, then you're, you're, you're out. You're bad. I know. That's it. <laughs> he loved keeping everybody off guard all the time. You know, he just yep. loved it. It's his weird, freaky, you know, control thing. Power, and, ego. Um, Yep. I forgot you guys did apprentice in did. all the different areas. Oh my God. And that That's was right. the, and that was the hardest part was waiting for him to walk in and like just get <laughs> mad at you for just being yeah. in a room, like doing like I how did I do this wrong? I don't know, but somehow people were doing things wrong and they were removed and they were bad. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, he removed Mark Yeager from post, and I think he removed Ray Midoff from post at the same time. There were three execs that got removed from post and they yeah. were, we saw them the next day on the decks running mm -hmm. around doing physical labor where the day before that they were on their jobs. And he yeah. wanted us to see that. He wanted us to see yeah. that. So we knew like he's in charge and if we mess up, we're, you know, that's going to be your destiny. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, that's, those are the exact, I, I explain in my book, uh, Ray Midoff getting busted. Mm -hmm. And that was the first person that I saw David Miscavige physically beat. And because he's tall, he had Ray Midoff sit in a chair while he beat him because yeah. David Miscavige is so small. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I was in the WDC conference room or the RTC conference room and witnessed it with my own eyeballs. Ugh. Yeah, he was the yeah. first one I saw. I saw dozens after that, unfortunately. But, um, but yeah, that was the first time I saw it. Yeah, I was literally praying to every god in the universe that I would pass my meter check. I was so oh happy that I passed my meter check because I was like, if I don't pass, then they're going to want me to write up my overts, which you defined earlier. And I'm going to have to think of some overts. <laughs> like, what what overts do I have? Like, what am oh, I? I'm just like, sitting in here training. I'm just, we're not even doing anything. Like, I know. <laughs> what I know. overts? <laughs> Because you just had clearances, which are grueling. Like you had to get through clearances to be able to come to that property, and they're not easy to get through. And so, um, and I had to get 87 people approved by David Miscavige with all of his opinions about people and through the clearances and arrived. And now he's starting to pick them off. It's like, yeah. oh, oh, no. Yeah. yeah. And and some people, when they would flunk those meter checks, they were gone. They were gone. Yeah, they were. There was a couple. So we were all organized by different continents. So I was yeah. slated to go to um, the continental eastern United States liaison office, which is in New York. <laughs> and there were at least two people that were part of my eastern United States group that got removed during this whole <laughs> vetting process. I'm laughing was, because it's so bad. But yeah, <laughs> at the time we were just dying. Yeah. I never slept. I never slept. I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, they were removed and thankfully I survived. Somehow I made the cut. And yeah. eventually the other thing that he did that I found to be like really interesting to compare to this, like, okay, he's a monster. He, he can literally chop off your head by the snap of his fingers. I got that. I understood that at, you know, 19. Then mm -hmm. at the very end, when we were all being fired out, it was this love bombing. Now he does the love bombing, which is what a narcissist does, right? So so he shows you that he your life is in his hands and he's going to mutilate you if you do anything wrong. But then he also wants you to know that he loves you. So in, in this fake way. So at the very end when we got fired out, they did this huge goodbye and we we were all put in buses and we buses. were driven we were driven <laughs> through the property with all the Sea Org members of the entire international base waving goodbye, we love you. And it was this big love bomb. He personally shook every single one of us. He shook our hands personally. David Musiavich shook, I don't know how many hands there were in that picture, all of every single mm -hmm. one of us. And he gave us a gift um, from him with a card and a letter and a pen. And it said, keeping Scientology working. Cause that's the motto of RTC, <laughs> RTC. right? 
And so, and it, and it had its hand signed letter from David Miscavige saying how much, you know, he appreciates you. And I think I still have it somewhere. I should dig that thing up. That I don't know if funny. I still have it, but I might, um, I'll yeah. look for it for a future yeah. thing. And it yeah. was like, it was like so special, right? We were like, wow, we shook his hand and we got the pen and we got the We lost you. Your mic. Hold on, everyone, while we figure out her mic. I don't think it's my mic. Okay, so talk, Christy. Let's see if we can. No, can't hear you. Can So can people hear me? Say in the chat, can people hear me? Or no, it's Christy, they said. Check the button on the mic itself. Is there a button on the mic? Try unplugging the mic and plugging it back in. <laughs> she hit her mic, yeah, yeah, and it muted herself. It seems like there's a mute button on. I don't know if she can even hear me, though. Not, not working yet. Am I back now? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, That's no. okay. That's okay. We figured it out. Okay. I, I wasn't sure whose end it was on. I was hoping, you know, I'm that, sorry. yeah, that's okay. Okay. What was I saying? Um, oh yeah. So, he was love bombing us. Yes. Oh. Yes. You know, and that's him. Like he would like make it so that nobody slept for a week straight and then write an issue. Like it's been found that the basics have been completely, you know, sabotaged and therefore, as of today, you are to all go on study and all go to sleep and everyone thinks, oh, he's saving the day. No, he destroyed the day. Don't you remember? Can't yes. you think back one day? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And the love bombing was effective because you were like, you felt special. <laughs> you felt like there's only so many. Oh, oh here's the other thing he did. Yeah. I, I've told you this. We've talked about this. Remember, I'm 19. I've been in the Sea Org for like two and a half years because I like I joined when I was 16, but I turned 17 very shortly thereafter. Uh -huh. um, so I've been in the Sea Org two, two and a half years or so. I've hardly done anything. And is my mic still working? Are people yes. worried? Okay. No, right. it's all good. Okay. <laughs> it works. <laughs> and you saw the picture of us. We all were made commanders with bars, right? Mm -hmm. Normally, a normal Sea Org member would have to work many years and they'd have to put in an application every year for promotion to get to earn these bars, to earn this rank that you get in the Sea Org. And you, and you start as Swamper, then Petty Officer, First Class, Second Class. It takes a long time to become an officer. It takes a very long time. It's supposed to take a very long time. It should. Yeah. You're supposed well, to earn it, right? You're supposed and it's to also earn stupid it. because we're not Nate, we're not the military. <laughs> it's all it's it's really all a bunch of BS, honestly. But whatever. And if you're thinking in Sea Org terms, like, yeah, you earn it, you work, you you every year you put in an application. If your statistics are up, you get to you get the privilege of getting a next higher rank as eventually you become an officer, then you know, on and on it goes. He gave all of us. Every single one of us, I've been in the Sea Org two and a half years, officer rank immediately. He just gave it to us. And, and the other thing about it is it's such, it's so bogus. Like send us out. We're these hotshot, amazing new executives. I wasn't a hotshot. I was a 19 year old girl. I just got plucked out of nowhere. <laughs> Pretend to be a hotshot. Go out there and do awesome stuff because you're a hotshot. Because I, I, because I touched you with my magic wand and now you're a hotshot. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you know, maybe mm -hmm. after many years of this, I eventually became a competent, you know, whatever. But I'm just saying, like, it's just stuff like that. It's just so, ugh, it's just It's bad. fake. It's, it's also fake. fake. You know, the the thing that's so funny, I mean, it's just like, you you really glow until you, you know, glow it right type yeah. of thing, you know, yep. until. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that the reason why this new era management thing was so important to David Miscavige is because he wanted people that were loyal to him in every command position around the world. So that's why he had to personally approve every single person. That's why he had to look into their souls. That's why he had to keep them on the meter and asking if he had, if anyone had any bad intentions toward him specifically, you know, and then, so it was like, okay, so now you're mine. 
and now you're going out to all the continents and now you work for me. That exactly. Type of thing. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you definitely were, you felt like, okay, you have to measure up and you have to report back. And he wanted that to be the feeling that we all had. Like we belong yeah. to him and we're his team and we're there representing him and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Mm -hmm. I, just gave a, I just gave a blah, blah, blah. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, that was, that's from Mike. In honor of Mike. Mike. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, East U.S. So I was there for five years um, in CLO, East U.S., the Continental Liaison Office. That is where I met my um, ex-husband, Chris Colbrand. We got married. That's my that's where the Colbrand comes from, <laughs> mm -hmm. from my ex-husband. Um, and we got married while we were in New York. And then eventually he was, he was the Commodore's messenger org. He was the command. He, sorry. No, eventually later on, he got chosen to be the commanding officer for the Africa um, Commodore's messenger org. And mm -hmm. so him and I both went back to Los Angeles, did some training, and then we got fired out to Africa. So mm -hmm. I, moved all around. I was in New York for five years. Then I was in South Africa in Johannesburg for, um, five years or so. And that mm -hmm. was, that was really the last place I really spent a lot of time. Um, and then after that, we came back to LA for a little bit and then that's when we left. And I guess probably the most, well, another exciting story, exciting, not the right word. Interesting story might be the whole Joburg org renovations, which was another David right. Miscavige uh, experience. <laughs> yes, definitely tell that. That was, I mean, all the way in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So well, on the one hand, getting, moving to Africa was nice because we were so far away that we were, you know, less affected by the direct command of everything because, you know, we, he was, my husband was the, was the sort of top of the organization board there in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and so in some ways that was, a, a, you know, a better situation. But <clears throat> when we came to Clearwater for uh, Christmas, one Christmas while we were in Africa, we actually managed to get some time off. We came to Clearwater to see his family and he got sucked into coming over to Flag, the Clearwater base here where David Miscavige and Jenny DeVocht and Angie Blankenship oh. were working on the whole ideal org, you know, the new sort of new building renovations thing, which became the latest and greatest, biggest thing at that time. Yeah. Um, and so it and started what, with- What year is this now? Let's see. Um, Around? Probably 2000 and I think the Joburg org renovations were completed in 2003. And this mm -hmm. was probably in 2002, 2001, because it took a couple mm -hmm. of years to get it all done. Right. Um, right. It, this, my dates could be off. That's that's what I'm remembering right now. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> okay, so he got sucked into that. He was here for a little bit. He stayed, He, I had to go back. I, our time was up and I had to go back and he was made to stay here for a little longer to do all the space planning for the new Joburg org renovations. And then when he came back to Africa, everything changed. Um, we were basically on a daily report line to David Miscavige for the renovations of Joburg Org. And it became a very big, important project that had to get done as quickly as possible. And, um, and that's sort of when the insanity started. And when I really saw how crazy the sort of you know, the Sea Org was becoming then because it was obviously yeah. crazy at the top and we would see bits and pieces of it. But now the bits and pieces really rolled all the way down to Africa. Yeah. And I mean, that, at that those years. So I at that time and sent to the Rehabilitation Project Force in Florida. So I spent two years there. That's when they locked down the hole at the Int base. And right. Jenny DeVogt and Angie Blankenship and David Miscavige were doing this stupid um, ideal org thing. So you were uh, in the midst of that, even though you were in Alaska, uh, in uh, Africa. Africa, you could feel yeah. that, you know? Oh yeah. It was, it was crazy. Like we were, we weren't sleeping. We were working day and night 24 seven to get these renovations done. And 
I mean, that is when I personally experienced the whole lack of sleep thing that all of you guys were already experiencing at the international base. Now it was rolling all the way down there because of the pressure that we were under and the daily report line where we had to send a report every day to like how, what our progress is and are we making progress to get these renovations done and the fundraising and the stress. And Ugh. it was insane. It was, it was yeah. just absolute insanity. And Chris being sort of Chris, my, he's my ex-husband. He sort of was in charge of it, was under the most pressure. And he was sort of pushing down onto us what was being pushed onto him. So he was a total dickhead. He was a total <laughs> asshole. I'm, I'm, I, I don't feel that way about him now, but you know, he, he would tell you that, you know, he would say to, 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 to us, uh, if he was here, I was, <laughs> he was, <Yeah. laughs> he was mean and he was hard on us because they were hard on him. And it was just, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Like it was just, rolling down, rolling down the, the nastiness um, from Miscavige to Jenny to Angie to Chris to me all the way down to you know what I mean and yes it was just horrible that was a horrible time period where we were so stressed out we were con and that project was just it was awful so eventually yeah. it got done the org the org was fully mm -hmm. renovated it was opened Miscavige came with his entourage to Africa to the grand Personally. opening he came. And he tells he tells the IRS, "Oh no, I don't I don't do anything personally." <laughs> yeah. I know he came. You know, I'm not involved in management because he's not supposed to be. But yeah, and he says that he's not, but he's in, dictates every little, teeny teeny thing, including yeah. flying out to Africa. Yeah. So what yeah. happened? Were you there when he arrived? Oh yeah, I was there, and um, he toured around, and he loved it. He was very happy with the org, um, with the renovations. But again, it was right into the like, you know, every single person terrified of like, okay, <laughs> if you blink, if you do this, if you, we knew, like, you just know, like, you you can do one tiny little thing wrong, and you're dead. So you tell me about it. yeah, so we all knew that's what it was like. Um, he he yeah. came and. <clears throat> Some of the stuff that was just gross when I think back on it, like he also was there for um, the public and a whole, tons of public. Because, I mean, when is when before then and whenever again, is he going to come to Africa? Probably never. Um, so he did like something. I can't remember when where he met with the public and the public came and met him and shook his hand and got their picture taken. And like after that, people had pictures on their mantles and the community of Joburg yeah. with a picture uh. of them with David Miscavige. Like, <laughs> so gross. It just makes me so grow up just thinking about it. For real. Uh, anyway, but yeah, so he was a big celebrity, you know, and he and he, you could see him uh, enjoying it. You could see him enjoying it. Like, I'm coming to Africa. I'm David Miscavige. I'm never going to come back here again. Let's use this to let me build, you know, f fill my ego up even more, so pump it up yeah. even bigger. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so that was just gross. But anyway. Um, yes. <laughs> Like, like this is, this is uh, Jeff Hawkins. Hi, hi, my friend. He says Miscavige wants people to be terrified of him. Very, very true. Yeah. Very, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. 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 Um, so, but that whole thing was sort of the thing that <clears throat> sort of started the end for me and Chris, because is it oh, that, good. yes, that experience, that, Joburg org pressure being so connected to David Miscavige's, you know, wrath uh, yep. through the line that we were on um, is really what kind of <clears throat> started the beginning of the end for us. Um, at, shortly after the, the org, we did the grand opening. Um, I was on projects constantly working in the org to help the org grow. And um, we were the so the, there's a thing in Scientology, the birthday game, which is every year all the orgs all across the world are trying to um, get the highest stats, the, high, the best statistics they can get for LRH's birthday on March 13th. And they play against each other. And it's a game they play to be the best. And Joe Bergor was very much playing the birthday game and trying to be the best. And um, <clears throat> they were, they basically were the best and they, and they, should have won the birthday game, but Miscavige likes to hand out the awards to whoever he wants to hand them out to. So yeah. that year, instead of giving Joburg Org the birthday game win, he gave Joburg Org a St. Hill size trophy, which is another accomplishment that the orgs are trying to get, which is to say that they've reached St. Hill size, which is the size that St. Hill was apparently when Eleanor Hubbard was there. 
And he gave the birthday game win to Milano Org. And the org was devastated over this. They were happy that they were, uh, you know, told they were St. Hill size, but they were like, they, the staff members could see the bullshit, right? The staff members at <laughs> Joburg Org could see the bullshit. They were like, okay, we just won the birthday game. We saw it. We saw the stats. We knew that yeah. we were the, we knew that we were the top, but Milano Org is also a really big uh, favorite org of David mm-hmm. Miscavige. So he gave them the birthday game win and he gave us the St. Hill size trophy instead. Right. And right. it was just like shit like that, that I saw. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is, he. it's his world. He can do whatever he wants. There's no yeah. rhyme or reason he, to it. There's, he probably wanted to go to Italy or something stupid like that, you know? Yeah. He just, yeah. he wanted to butter up the, the ED of the Milano org and keep her happy because she makes a lot of money for him or whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, all, and he wanted to show the world that we're booming and everything's great even though we're not. So we'll give these guys an award and these guys an award and it looks better that way, right? That's, right. Um, so things like that were happening and it was like, just we could start to see the bullshit and see the fakeness of all of mm-hmm. it. It's just like, it's not real. This stuff is just not real. Yeah. Um, and then Chris got um, <clears throat> called to go to the free wins with all of the other COs, commanding officers for all of the continental Commodore's messenger orgs in the world. And they all went to the free ones to meet with Dave. And Chris went and Dave wasn't there. And it was like this whole rigmarole where he was like, he was there, he ordered them there, but now we have to go to the imp base. And he was just a dickhead. Like he ordered them to be there. So they all get there. He's not there. Stupid ridiculousness that he does. Um, and while he was on the free wins, he saw other execs like Mike Rinder and, you know, other people that were top execs being treated like SPs. He saw basically some of the whole that was going on oh, happening. Good. He saw it happen. Chris saw it with his own eyes oh, on the boy. free wins because I think it was around the time of the maiden voyage and he saw yeah. them in the bilges. Yeah. And he saw David Miscavige referring to Norman Starkey as an SP. And for people that aren't at the it base, we think of Norman Starkey as the LRH's, you know, special person. What is he? He's the I can't remember. Is it he, was he was a he was a captain of one of the um, the Sea Org ships and long term veteran. And he was also the trustee of his trustee. estate. That was yeah. the word I was thinking of. He was the yeah. trustee of the estate. And we're thinking like, this is a really important guy. And David Miscavige is just, he's an SP. This one's an SP. That one's Mm -hmm. an SP. And -hmm. Chris was basically brought there and told that he had been chosen to become WDC something. WDC Scientology. Yeah. Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) So my husband at the time is like, okay, you've been chosen. You're going to get moved up to WDC. And he sees how WDC is treated. He sees Mike in the hole. He sees Norman Starkey. He sees these other top execs being treated like shit. And when he comes back from that trip, he comes back, he wants to leave the Sea Org. Oh my and God. He tells nobody except me. He's like, I'm done. I want to leave. I don't want to yeah. do this anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, totally shocked. I'm like, you just went to the international base. Like this is the, and now you want to leave? Like, it just yeah. wasn't what I, you know, it, I was like, holy shit. So, um, yeah. So, kind so, of, so he went from the ship to the int base. He went so, from the ship, he went to the int base, and then he came he back did. to Africa. And he came back to Africa because it was like, you were chosen for this. We're not doing it right now. We're not doing it today. But just so you know, you were chosen for this, and we're going to get our ducks in a row, and you're going to get through your clearances, and you're eventually going to be moving up. And he obviously needed people to move up because he was throwing everyone into the garbage and into the hole and getting rid of everyone. So he's looking yeah. for people to, to pull up. So Ugh. young people like Chris and Chris Ugh. and I were younger to pull up and, and, you know, people that would be listen to him and be his new robots. Yeah. And now, that was Chris's first time to the end base. Wouldn't it? First time. Been? First yeah, because I was going to say he wasn't on the original command teams. No, yeah. he was not. So <laughs> his first time made a good impression. I can see that. <laughs> I, I'm so I'm honestly grateful for how everything played out because I mm. I might still be in the Sea Org was it oh were it God. not for Chris like Chris had yeah. a good influence on me in many yeah. ways um, so yeah. Um, yeah so anyway so Chris came back wanting to leave the Sea Org um, we um, 
he he kind of was flapping around with just talking to me and not telling anyone else. Um, yeah. And I didn't know what to do. I was like, I, I was still of the mindset of like, well, we got to handle him. We got to fix him. We got to change his mind. Cause I was still, yeah. you know, being a good girl and all this. Yeah. Um, and um, so eventually I was like, okay, so we need to, maybe we should get him in session. We should, you know, get him some auditing and see it. Cause he was telling me, he was also telling me other things. He was like, I, I think I'm suicidal and I think this and I think that. I think yeah. some of it, he was just kind of, some of it, I think he was also, you know, maybe some of it was true, but maybe some of it was just whatever he could create to like, let, I Be gotta able to get, get out of there. I gotta yeah. get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you'll um, come up with anything. You will. Really. You'll, you'll, yeah. just, you'll come up with, so some of it was that he was telling me these things and I was like, oh, oh geez Louise. Okay. What are we going to do with you? What are we, how are we going to fix you? That was yeah. my, <laughs> my mindset. We got to fix this. And really what I should have done, what I, if I was being a truly good senior member is reported it to our seniors because, yeah. um, he was the top of the org board where we were and no one locally really should know this, but yeah. instead I told the CS and the CS was a class five staff member because we didn't have any, we didn't have, we're, we're out in Africa. We didn't have auditors and CSs, the case supervisors, the person who supervises your auditing. And yeah. our case supervisor was, um, was a staff member at a class five org. So really it's, it was very inappropriate out there in Africa. Totally, inappropriate. We, totally not the way it should be because we didn't have our own auditors. We didn't have our own CS. So any auditing we got done was under these people that were part of Joburg org. So mm -hmm. instead of telling his senior who I should have told, I went and told the CS secretly. I did. I was like, I don't want them to know because they're going to yank him. As soon as I tell them that he's not doing well, they're going to yank him. And I'm not going to have any idea what's going to happen to him. I'm just going to be stuck here waiting, not knowing. <clears throat> so I did my own handling. I told the um, CS and she was like, okay, <clears throat> we have to we have to, there's a word, here's another word. We have to de-stimulate him. We have to get him <laughs> yeah. de-stimulated, which means we have to get him like calm down, relaxed, like take the stress off so that he can like start to think properly. And we have to do that first because he's very upset right now. And then after yeah. that, we can put him in session and do some auditing and figure out what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is all like totally, I'm totally off the rails doing this stuff. Like I am, yeah. I am totally on my own thing. Like not telling anybody that my husband, who's the top of the top here is having a, wants to leave. Cause I'm like, we're going to fix him. We're going to change his mind. It's, it's going to be fine. We're going to be fine. No one needs to know. <laughs> handle and report. That's yeah, a policy in Scientology. <laughs> if you handle it, then you can do a report after. Right. So I'm thinking it's okay. I got handle and report on my side, which is totally not correct. I was totally off the rails, yeah. um, but I was trying to fix it. So, so in order to do this de-stimulation, she suggested that we leave our posts. We drive into the forest <laughs> and we, oh my God, this is just hysterical thinking about this now. She let us go stay at her family's private cabin in the woods, like three or four hours away. And we're gonna stay there for a couple days and we're gonna calm down and we're gonna be okay. And once get we're all sleep. Yeah, get some sleep and it's gonna be fine. And I'm like, this sounds great. We're gonna go on a little vacation. We're gonna get away. I'm gonna tell Alex, Alex, who is the deputy commanding officer, Alex Faust, I'm going to tell him that we're doing this and I'm going to tell him, do not tell anyone else. This is our little secret. I yeah. am going to take Chris and I'm going to fix him and it's going to be fine. And nobody has to know that I'm doing this. Yeah. Um, of course, Alex, I, I, I thought Alex was on my side. I thought he was going to keep our secret uh -oh. a secret. Mm -hmm. And he did keep it a secret for like two days. And then on like the I, maybe one, one or two nights, then on like the second day, we hear this bam, 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 on the oh, door man. and I'm like, oh, oh shit, we're fucking screwed. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> so in comes Alex and he, a driver drove him there and they found out where we were and they got the CS to tell them where we were. And we're like, totally, I'm in so much trouble. And he oh, has, man. he has on the phone the Chris's senior, which I'm trying to remember who it was at the time. I think it might've been um, Jenny. I don't yeah, know, whoever, whoever the DCO sure cons Jenny. is, Jenny, Jenny yeah, DeVox. Yeah. And she's like, that little cunt, Christy, she's trying to sabotage. She's trying to sabotage us. And she's like, they basically blamed me and said that I was trying to sabotage Chris um, yeah. because Chris is their little angel baby that 
did this wonderful thing in Africa and I'm trying to yeah. sabotage him. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was yeah. like, I am not trying to sabotage him. I'm trying to fix him so we can all stay yeah. here in our happy little Africa space away from you crazy people where <laughs> we're all happy and doing fine and we don't have to do with you. Um, but, <clears throat> but he was quickly, he was immediately taken to the airport and put on a plane and flown to Los Angeles. No, like, I didn't he even, was not. Literally. Was taken away and he sent was, to the United States. Yeah, like I think they maybe went back to the to the birthing and got like one little bag, and I was sent back to be on on physical labor. I was immediately like in trouble. I was doing, yeah. I was totally busted. I was in so much trouble, yeah. and I was yeah. like, my handle and report plan did not work out. It did not work. <laughs> you so, were trying to take responsibility for the situation. That's so stupid. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. So he got brought to Los Angeles, he was immediately put on to sex checking. He was not just put on to regular sex checking. He was put on to FPRD style sex checking, which is where they're like going into your past lives, looking for your evil purposes, evil purposes. trying to like get to the bottom of why, you know, and they were trying to handle him because he had so much, he had a lot of um, knowledge and had sort of been so close to, um, Miscavige on this project, on this Joburg Orc project. And yeah. he had done mm -hmm. all the, he had done all the space planning, Clearwater, and they felt like he was really close to this project and they just didn't want him to leave. Yeah. So they started suck checking him for months and months and months. I was back in Africa, exactly like I thought, getting no information, having very little news about what was going on with him. And constantly... I would hate that. You're in Africa and yeah. you have no idea what's happening with your husband in the United States that they took away and they're yeah. blaming you for his state of mind. Yeah. I'm in, I'm to blame. It's my fault. And I didn't handle it. And, and I tried to sneak away and do the secret handling. And <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I'm in like lower conditions. So I'm like, I'm in the dog house. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. and they're not really, they don't really care about me. They just want to fix him. But yeah. after getting weeks and weeks of no, information, I've, I kind of thought, okay, maybe, um, <clears throat> maybe he wants to leave still because they haven't handled him. And I keep going, how's he, is he, has he changed his mind yet? Has he changed his mind? Is it, like, we're know. still working on it. We're still working on it. Like no information. Like who, who were you trying to find out from? Like, how are you getting any information in Africa? Well, you know, we did communicate with the people at CMO IXU. So the oh, okay. Okay. International Extension Unit was where he was. He was in LA and they were okay. communicating to me to tell me things and yep. barely anything, but they were telling me some things. Um, and they were basically saying like, okay, once we get him handled, we'll let you know. And then maybe we'll figure out what's going to happen. And you're probably going to get pulled back here too. But for now, you need to stay there because Africa needs you. So I had no idea what was the future. Like, am I just right. stuck here for who knows how long? Mm -hmm. So oh, God. that was going on. And I just, I assumed that he probably wanted to leave still and was not getting handled and yeah. was not going to change his mind. And because they never told me that they handled him and it was just weeks and weeks. So then I decided, yeah. I think that the best thing for me to do is to um, let them know that I want to leave too. So oh, God. you're was, brave. You're brave because already you're a target. So, <laughs> yeah, well, at that point, I was like, I'm not staying here by myself. So if he is leaving the Sea Org and they're not handling him, I'm leaving the Sea Org, too. I, I did yeah. not want to be in the Sea Org without him. I was like, I'm no. not staying. And I especially did not want to be in the Sea Org in Africa, where I right. probably would never get replaced and never come back to my home country where my family and my friends and like, I just thought I would just be stuck there forever. Yeah. How would you pay for it? Uh, you know, you're, it's just ridiculous. Plus and they the compensate thing, your passports and all that kind of stuff. And the thing that I haven't really explained about what, what I did, like you guys were all at the international base and there's a certain yeah. level, there's a certain degree of hell in being at the international base. There's a, mm -hmm. there's another very hellish thing about being in a continental <laughs> office and the continental offices are broke. They have no money. All the money goes up to the international base. The continental offices have nothing. So like we're eating shit food all the time and the birthing yeah. is disgusting. And the continental yeah. offices are just shit. They're horrible. They're terrible. Yeah. There's no, it's like, 
Ugh, it's just yeah. bad. So for me to yeah. be like stuck here for the rest of my, I was like, oh, oh my god, it's not happening, right? Like we're eating peanut butter. Mm-hmm. Like this is like we don't. They don't have any money. Like because Scientology yeah. takes the money to the top. Nobody else gets any money. Like the kind of losses get yeah. nothing. So, um, so yeah. So I was like, I'm not staying here by myself because. Chris and I managed to do okay out there because his parents were constantly giving us money, which again was off the rails. We weren't allowed to have money. See, they, that's an external influence. That's, right. that's what it, when it, if that was found out, it would be considered an external influence and it would mean cut the line. So, and, it, we, and it was found out. It was found out Ooh. when we, when we were, when we were going through this, like we want to leave thing. Yeah. That was when they found out like, oh, okay. And how much money have your parents been giving? Like they were giving us money to like have a halfway decent life. Cause yeah. otherwise we would have had less than $50 a week. Yeah. Um, you know, and that is not enough to pay for anything. Like you, you yeah. can't even buy shampoo. Like it's just ridiculous. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, that was how we were managing to like sort of get by was on the money that our, his parents were giving us. Yeah. Um, and so who did you tell that? Okay. I don't know okay, so, with my husband, but I want to leave. <laughs> yeah. So, well, first I decided that that's what I needed to do. And I, I basically had like a true legitimate panic attack before having to tell someone because I was so scared. I was oh. so scared oh, I to just say the it. words, to say the mm-hmm. words, I want to leave the C word. It was like uh-huh. everything in my body, everything in my brain is like, you can't, this is something you cannot do. Like Mm -hmm. you aren't allowed to do this. And, um, but I was like, but I'm, I'm doing this. And so I was fighting with myself. So I went to the roof, I went to the roof of the building and I paced for about 45 minutes. I smoked a million cigarettes because everyone smoked, including me. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was just up there pacing. Like my heart was beating out of my chest. I was just so terrified of like, how, how am I going to do this? I, I don't think I even said the words. I think I wrote it on a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> and I went into Alex. So Alex was the, the deputy commanding officer. He mm-hmm. was the one that pulled us out and got us busted and got the whole thing. on you. Yeah, he yeah. narked on us. And I walked into his office mm-hmm. and I handed him a piece of paper that basically said, I don't, I, I want to leave the Sea If Chris is leaving, I'm leaving. I'm not doing yeah. this. I'm not staying here. And so yeah. far, as far as I know, he's leaving. So... Yeah. And then I was in even more trouble, of course. And um, yeah, so um, I was immediately put onto the decks and made to do more physical labor. And I was sort of awaiting information on what they didn't have anything. They didn't have it. Like I said, they don't really have any auditors out there to sec check because we're in Africa. Yeah. So they just made me do they just made me do physical labor for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Oh, my God. And um Eventually, I was told that Chris is staying, that they handled him. And so oh. I was, yeah, so I was staying. So I, like, I didn't, I couldn't talk to him. So I was just oh. like, whatever, it was just kind of like, whatever he's doing, I'm doing. Are we staying? Are we leaving? Like, yeah. I just, I would, yeah. you and I were together. That was the thing. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I'm staying. And um, I had to go through, you know, get through lower conditions. And I had to raise my own, I had to raise money so I could pay for my airfare so I could go back to LA. <laughs> okay, so you're leaving Africa because he's staying, yeah. right? Yes. Okay, so you had to raise your own money to get I had to back. raise the money to, I had to raise the money by collecting like, you know, anyway, I had, yeah, I had to raise the, raise the money because they don't have any money. Africa doesn't have any money. And that took a while to, to raise the money <laughs> oh, to pay for on. the flight. So I could go back to LA so that I could be reunited with my husband who now has apparently wants to stay. And we we're both being commeved. So we're both being put through a committee of evidence, which is like the highest level of justice and in, justice. In, 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 yeah, justice. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a <laughs> kangaroo court basically where you're told you're guilty. There's not really any justice, but um, yeah. so we're both being put through that more physical labor. Uh, eventually we get through enough things that they're like, okay, Chris wants to stay. Christy wants to stay. We've, when I get to LA, we're not allowed to, to be together. We're not allowed to have a room together. We're separated oh my God. In, in different rooms. We can talk to you each other. You just need at, to be punished. Just yeah. punish you. Yeah. We can talk to each other at lunch and dinner and whatever, but we can't be in the same room with each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> eventually we get through all the requirements so that we can be in the same room together, so we can sleep together and have a room. 
and we're in we're together for two weeks and i can tell chris does not want to stay <laughs> yes i'm like yeah. okay we we got through all this stuff so we could be <laughs> reunited so we can finally talk to each other to find out he does not want to stay like he just did all of that to get through it so that we could now get to this point where now again he does not want to be here yeah he was put through so much sex checking it was horrible he was being sex checked by um what's heber jensen's current wife's name karen no karen no karen, karen? jens uh i you, think it's karen okay i don't remember her name but anyway she's in she's oh, in Jan the janet she's in the office of special affairs i think it's janet and she's like a well she was like a considered like a uh, a good a top, a top, like they would use her for really important jobs. So yeah. she was the person put on the job of handling Chris. So yeah. eventually they handled him, uh, well, with her, you know, but he wasn't handled. Um, yeah. And so, I, you know, this is like, how many months is this? I don't know, six months to more than six months of like sex checking, separation. Oh, just, we're finally together. It's just went on and on and on. We're finally together. We're finally, we're in L.A., we're working in the landlord office, which is like the office that does all the renovations and space planning and designing and all that. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, Yvonne, someone just wrote it. Yvonne. Oh, Jench. thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh Yvonne. yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, that's his first not Yvonne? wife. Yvonne is his first wife. Um, oh, I can't remember her name, but anyway, yeah. Jane, 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 Jane. Yeah, Jane I was thinking Jench. Janet, but not Janet. Jane, Jane. Jane. Yeah. yeah, Jane. She was like considered. Thank you, the, Mike. She Mike Rinder is poking in. And by the yes. way, just so that you know, when um, we put the link to his channel, it was an old link, apparently. So this is streaming to some old YouTube channel that Mike oh. had. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, we can still put it up on his channel afterwards. But okay. Yeah, Mike, Mike says, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thanks, honey. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So Jane, ch sex checking, Chris. We're together, um, and <clears throat> at that point, um, so six months of this crap. It, it was it was at least six months. It could have been more. Oh. Um, so eventually, I'm we're together. We're in the room. We're talking, and I'm like, I know you don't want to stay, and I'm starting to feel the same way. And it was mm -hmm. really bad at that point. At that level, we were at the flag liaison office, so we're in LA. It's the yeah. uh, Hollywood Guarantee Guarantee Building, and the sort of vibe is just we're all in the doghouse. Everybody's always in lower conditions, just like it was at the international base. The hole was oh. going on at the time. We're all, everyone's Everybody's dog shit. It's always yeah. bad. You're always eating rice and beans. There's nothing. It's just like, what are we doing? No pay. Yeah. Everything's yeah. just horrible. We're nobody's yeah. good enough. Every like, no. like what, what is the point? So mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, we got to get out of here. Let's go. We got to yeah. leave. Um, yeah. and I just knew that I knew that we wouldn't be able to leave, that we would just be stuck there. They would just keep putting him on sex check after sex check after sex check. And they would just, it was just like, it was like torture. Just like, there's no way out. The only way out is to leave sure. un unauthorized, which most people did yes. like Mark and Claire and you know, other people, but we had our families. We had our parents oh, and I had my brother God. and sister and he had his parents and his two brothers. Leverage. And Leverage. we did it. That's Scientology and the Sea Orgs, you know, go to is their leverage is they control your family and they right. can they can destroy your family if you don't stand play with them you know if you yeah. don't follow what they want so right and so we didn't want to lose the family so no so you know i talked about in the beginning making the decision at 16 years old to join the sea org and not have children which was not a decision i ever wanted to make i always yeah. wanted to have children i was very yeah. very like when my sister had a baby, my sister was in the Sea Org briefly and she left because she got pregnant, um, not not intentionally and had a baby. It was like, that was my baby. Like I loved that oh. baby so much. And I was like, oh. oh my God, she had a baby and pictures and I got to see him, like spend one day with him. And it was, oh, you know, it was like the most amazing, beautiful thing, part of life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this was something I always wanted to do. And I was like, okay, Chris, so we can either blow, which is we're going to lose our family. We're going to get declared and we don't want to yeah. lose our families or yeah. we can have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> let's, have, let's have a baby. 
because I want a baby. So let's do that because we're going to have one anyway, right? So <laughs> because if we have a baby, then they cannot just keep sex checking you for another 10 years. Like they've just been right. sex checking you. Like if we have a baby, then they have to let us leave at some point. Like we, yeah. uh, we're not going to stay the here. Baby's the baby's going to come. <laughs> yes. Um, so that was it. So I was like, we're, we're going to have a baby. So uh, we, we made that happen. And um, we kept it a secret for about two and a half months, as long as I could possibly keep it before. That was the hardest secret I've ever kept in my life. Oh my going, God. Because go, otherwise they might force you to go get an abortion because it yeah. makes you, yeah, yeah. It, it's in the CR because you, you're not allowed to have kids. You know, if you get pregnant, the go-to is get an abortion. And right. that way you can stay in the Sea Org. And if you don't, then you're in ethics trouble because now you're a problem and you have to you have to leave anyway. It's just yeah. horrible. So you had to keep it a secret. I had to keep it a secret um, for as long as I could, you know, because I didn't want to have that conversation. I was afraid of my will to withstand the pressure. <sighs> I was afraid that I would get so much pressure and I wouldn't be able to withstand it. Um, yeah. So I just kept it a secret for as long as I could. And then eventually, yeah. um, <clears throat> eventually we did the same thing. <laughs> we yeah. wrote it on a piece of paper. I like didn't want to say the words ever because it was just too hard to say the words. It's hard. Okay, let me just stop, pause for a second. Like, so that people can understand you, when you sign your bill in your contract, you work in a group, you are loyal to that group, you have, um, you know, all this agreement that it's the only salvation for mankind, your whole family's in it, there's everything to lose, you know, if you leave it. And so to like, come forward and say, I'm deserting you, you know, is just not natural feeling you know like matt matt had to be the one that says that's it we're going and like practically drag me but um because yes. it's hard i dedicated yeah. my life to that you know as you did and it's like you do make friends like there's yeah. you have hundreds of friends you have hundreds oh. it's not just a couple people it's like you have all no. these friends you have all these people you've known that you've spent all these years with many years with i by then Those i had been the in the yeah, I'd probably been in for by then 13 or 14 years. And yeah. so, um, yeah, so again, we, we, he went and he told the person that had to be told. And I sat in the, I sat in the call room. I was like, I'm not even going, you go tell them. He wrote it on a piece of paper. <laughs> piece of he took the piece of paper and said, here, you know, Christy's pregnant and we want to leave. And, um, <clears throat> And they, they came and collected me from the call space, the, the room where I was sitting, and put us in a little tiny security room, and we started the process of routing out of the Sea Org. Um, so <clears throat> that took me probably another two months. So mm -hmm. by the time I left the Sea Org, I was four and a half, almost five months pregnant. And oh it took Chris even longer, because again, they just kept sex checking him and um, took him even longer. So he was in, you know, by the time he got out, I was like six or seven months pregnant. Um, and where so, did you go? Like when you left, were you still in good standing? Yeah. So I did the routing out process okay. so that I could stay in, you know, good standing. How much good standing is it? I was a freeloader, right? But yeah, yeah I wasn't declared. I wasn't declared. So I was able to go home to my family. So I was able to go home right. to my mom and dad. Um, someone dropped me off at their house. They were on a vacation and my mom came home early from her vacation. And, um, you know, they took care of me. I stayed there with them for a couple months, two months, I think, yeah. while yeah. waiting for Chris to be yeah. let out. And finally he was let out. And, um, <clears throat> and then, um, and then once he was let out, then we came to Clearwater to live with his family. Um, and, that's kind of why I wound up here in, in this area um, yeah. because of his family was all here. Um, so yeah, that, I don't know where we're, where we're at now, but yeah. Well, well you left in good standing and you were very pregnant and so, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you moved to Clearwater. And so how did you end up getting declared then? If you well, guys were in good standing. So we were in good standing, um, but Chris continued to, Chris never really like we left, the CR and Chris sort of vaguely felt like a Scientologist, but not really. So he was mm -hmm. kind of pretty soon after I'm trying to remember how soon, I don't know, maybe 
a year or two after we left was really starting to like look at things on the internet and yes. um, starting to explore all the information. And, you know, we had all these experiences that I've kind of described here already with David Miscavige that were really yeah. negative. So we had uh -huh. that base of knowledge yeah. adding added into people leaving um, and us seeing all these people leaving. Um, so Marty Rathbun left and we were just yeah. like, what? Marty Rathbun? I, I mean, Marty Rathbun was like the right hand man to David Miscavige. So when we saw that, we were like, oh, my God, something something big is going on. And then Matt and I came out to Clearwater and visited you and Chris and you. And I think um, I, I think your son was only like three years old or something like that yeah. by that time when we saw. Him. And so you weren't totally in bad standing yet. No, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, no I wasn't. Um, yeah, yeah. So I didn't get declared yet for a, a, a while after. Um, yeah. So what happened? So Marty left, a bunch of people, top people left that, you know, we saw leaving and we were just really questioning things. And um, he was reading stuff on the internet. And eventually behind my back, he went and visited Marty and oh. um, didn't tell yeah. me about it because <laughs> he was afraid I wouldn't you know, agree. Cause I was still very, you know, I had my parents, I had, I had my family. I didn't want to lose that. Mm -hmm. Um, but then eventually, um, you know, he told, I, I figured out that's that was what he was doing. Cause he was starting to just talk to me about things and show me stuff. And eventually I did the bad deed of getting on the phone with Marty. And as soon as I did that, I knew I'd crossed a line because oh, I was like, okay, nice. I'll talk to Marty. Let's let me hear what he has to say. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still not declared yet. Right. I'm still not declared. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then that was at the time when um, what's that guy that um, took over as the spokesperson, the smarmy guy, what's his name? You mean um, Tommy Davis? Tommy Davis. <laughs> <laughs> so Tommy Davis was running around doing his thing around that time. And um, somebody, Chris was talking to people, ex or members that we were friends with and somebody ratted on us and told Osa that we were in, we were talking to Marty Rathbun and yeah. we, you know, that we were kind of exploring things and learning about, you know, what was going on. And um, we got in trouble basically. And they found out and um, we, we were just talking to him. We were just talking to him enough that that was it. That was all we had to do was just talk to Marty Rathbun. Yeah. And they basically, you know, and I was planning a trip to go see my parents to mm. educate them on everything. I had a trip planned. Oh. I, had, I had a flight booked. It was like oh. a Tuesday night and the flight was on Friday and I was going to fly out on a Friday to go talk to my parents and sit down and tell them everything I'd learned yeah. and all the things yeah. that Marty was exposing about, you know, and just kind of give them my, my mm -hmm. opinions based. Cause I had enough firsthand. Once I had other pieces, I was able to yeah, put it just, together. I was like, okay, this makes sense because I've had mm -hmm. my own firsthand experience with this guy, yeah. and, you know? Um, so, um, so at, at the time though, I wasn't ready to like give up the technology. I went through stages. I was ready to give All up. All of us did. Yeah. All of and us did. The first yeah. stage for me was I was ready to give up uh, the Sea Org, the, the church. Yeah. I was ready to give up yeah. the organization. This organization yeah. is crazy. I don't want anything Toxic. to do with it. Toxic, bad. But I was like, well, I don't know about Elrond Hubbard and his stuff. Maybe his stuff is still, maybe that part is not bad. Maybe it's just the, the organization. So I, it took me, you know, yeah. going through the layers. But anyway, um, so I wanted to explain that to my parents. Like, look, yeah. it's David Miscavige. It's the organization. They're all the bad guys and blah, blah, blah. And kind of get all that done. And I, I didn't make it there on that Friday oh. for that flight because Osa um, basically, you know, sabotaged my plans, went to my parents' house and thoroughly, you know, ruined the plan and basically explained to my parents that me and Chris were talking to Marty Rathbun and that we were really bad and that if we didn't change our minds and we didn't, you know, renege on sort of the road we were going down that we would get to Claire. So my parents called me. Um, I had like a two-year-old at the time, Shane. Oh, it pissed me off so much. It was nighttime. It was bedtime. I was trying to put my baby to bed. And I had like 30 or 40 minutes to talk to my parents. And I was like, look, I, you know, I was coming there on Friday to explain things to you, to tell you all, to tell you everything. I want to talk to you. I want to tell you, you know, everything I know. And they were just thoroughly, you know, disabused of anything I was going to say to them by Osa. And um, they basically said like, this is it, Christy, like come here now, speak to Osa, talk to them, get handled or you're getting declared. 
And I said, I'm not, oh, I'm not coming. I'm not going <gasps> to Osa. I don't want to hear anything that Osa has to say. No. I want to talk to you, mom and dad. I want to tell yeah. you, I want to have a conversation with you guys and let's talk as a family. And they just kept sort of saying, you know, you won't, that's not going to work. You have to come out. You have to speak to Osa. And I just said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to speak to Osa. And I got declared. It was like fast. It was, it was like one night and it was done. It was like, you didn't do it. You didn't do what you said. And I, they, my mom tried a couple more times, sent little emails. And then eventually it was just like, nope, you, you had your chance and you're, it's over declared. So that was the end of that. <laughs> so, and what year was that now? So you've been disconnected from your parents for like 10 years now or something? Yeah. Oh yeah. More than 10 years. More than um, that. I think. Yeah. So let's see. Cause Jack is, Jack is 11. They've never met Jack. Oh my God. He's um, 11. <laughs> Jack is 11. Shane was like two, I think. And Shane is 16. So two oh, or almost three. Wow. He was almost three. So yeah. So it was 2009, 2010, either the end of 2009, the beginning of 2010, somewhere around there. Okay. That, um, and yeah. So you haven't spoken to your parents since then? And they're still in Scientology or we don't even know their status? Yeah. Well, so my father has passed away since then. My mother is definitely still in Scientology. My sister and my brother are still in Scientology and they, they all do not speak to me. I saw my whole family. The last time I saw them was Thanksgiving 2008. 2008. That's I when mean, I saw them. I talked to them more. You know, the disconnection happened, I think, end of 2009. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're lost, you know, because... <laughs> You're the most amazing, beautiful, caring, loving person. And they should listen to your freaking story. Yeah. The thought stopping that Scientology has. And thank you, Osa, for your complete total criminality. It just makes me so enraged every single time that they take pleasure in destroying families like this. They think it's their duty. And it's really, really a violation of the basic fundamentals of human rights, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I keep speaking out. They did it to my family. They've yeah. done it to Matt's family. We still have a, a situation with Matt's brother disconnected from the whole rest of the family never saw his non-scientology parents when they on their deathbed or anything he just wouldn't talk because they're connected to matt you know my right. husband is so stupid and it makes me so mad and um i'm sorry that that's still going on boy yeah i'm just I, I just keep speaking out to try to make a difference and raise people's awareness you know because you know <laughs> yeah. it's your family it's, it's your family. family and it and it cuts deep and it's because you have integrity because you didn't want to be part of something that was so abusive, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, um, and, and, and like I said, throughout this, this talk tonight, I adored my parents. They were mm. like, Oh, that makes it weird. They Like we were close. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Is that something I, I get teary eyed up about much these days? Cause I'm, you know, life moves on and you move on. And, but like, we were a good family. Like that was, yeah. um, you know, so anyway, yeah. it was, of like, course, of course it's, you know, it's, it's the most basic fundamental thing in the world and that Scientology tromps on that should end them. Honestly, yeah. should yeah. seriously end them. And um, I just got to show some of these pictures from the, of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, because look at this, you went mm -hmm. and got with Mike Rinder, who is just so amazing. I've known him for a million years and just love him. And I'm so happy for you. Yeah. And there's little baby Jack. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then look at, look at big brother with the big, big, big smile so cute i know and then matt and i came out and saw you as soon as right after you had jack this is us together then and then your beautiful wedding with mike and your two beautiful sons so you got three boys yeah <laughs> all the boys over here <laughs> all the boys and of course your your wedding was in paradise look how beautiful that is yeah. boy and you guys are such an amazing couple, and I love you guys so much. And this is Matt and I coming. We lived in uh, in Washington State, but we would come to see Matt's family in Florida all the time and never fail to come by and see you guys. And here's Jack getting a little bit 
older there. <laughs> and uh, you know the mic render bobbleheads? Well, here's the bubbleheads. <laughs> So I love that. I love that picture. And then, of course, you guys as a family just take the most amazing portraits. There you are. It's so beautiful. And here's another one. It's so That's sweet that you put all this together. Amy put this together. She pulled all these pictures. <laughs> I did. I did. That's because, so <laughs> I mean, you guys are just all so precious. Precious to me, but precious to the world, too. And I love you guys so much. And you were on Scientology in the aftermath. And here's how your beautiful picture of uh, one of the scenes, screenshot, we got on that. And then here's you and Mike, and there's Claire and Mark at the mm -hmm. Emmys for that, mm -hmm. which are, you guys just so beautiful. And then next to a giant Emmy, that's so fun. And then another one of the Emmy awards, look at that couple, you guys should be <laughs> on the top of a cake, you know, like you look like the perfect, <laughs> the perfect uh, bride and groom type of thing. You guys are so beautiful. <laughs> and then on top of everything you've been doing to expose Scientology, and I know that you're on a lot of shows and you can talk about that if you would like, but um, you created an amazing business. Go ahead and talk yeah. about that a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah, oh, we've, we've been here so long. I'm sure people are ready to go. But um, yeah, so in addition to No, no, to all no, that, this, it's early. It's early. <laughs> okay. Um, We're going to yeah. do questions after this. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah, so in addition to all that, yeah, so I have a business. Um, I created this, this doula agency, and we support families and people that are having babies, and we provide labor and birth support and postpartum support and childbirth education and breastfeeding support, and um, it's a really fun, you know, business. I, obviously, I love babies and families, and that's kind of my, my shtick. And um, I kind of found where I was meant to be. And we, we have this, my company is called Buddha Belly Doulas in Tampa mm -hmm. Bay. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. And it, like for me to have sort of started where I did and joined the Sea Org at 16, never graduated high school, didn't go to college to grow my own business where now I have a team of like 25 plus doulas that work for me in my company. And, um, you know, I'm able to, you know, support my family and like it, contribute in a huge degree to supporting my family. That that's a win for me. Like having grown up that's, in a cult. I know. <laughs> I never, that I that doesn't I want that doesn't yeah. want babies that rejects right. babies yeah. or aborts babies yeah. to to having a a company that gives people so much support and love yeah. at the time of need and brings babies into the world healthy. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, it's the kind of thing I wish I could tell my parents, you know. <laughs> I know. Here we go. But I, yeah, I pray, I pray, Christy, that you will be able to. You know, it. we have to just keep speaking out and bring awareness because, it, you know, there will be a change. There will be a change. And I, I'll keep praying because it's so important. Yeah. You know, I don't know what I would have done if I, I mean, you lost your dad without being able to see him. Yep. That's you right. know, and that's, it's just, it's just, anyway, I will keep using my voice. I'm dedicated to that. And, you know, and anyway, and I will continue to pray that there is a resolution on this. Yeah. It's got to be a resolution. I think, Absolutely. I think it's coming to a head. I really do. I mean, the and amount of stuff going on right now, Scientology yeah. is just, it's, it's amazing. The, the yeah. SPTV world and the lawsuits, yeah. and it's a totally different yeah. landscape than it was, you know, 10 years ago. I did yeah. speak out in the beginning, you know, after I connected up with Marty Rathbone, I happily yeah, volunteered and I was, um, my husband, my ex-husband and I were on the front cover of the New York Times uh, speaking <laughs> out back then. And, yeah. And then I went on the Today Show and, you know, I was like, and I still, and at that time I was still a Scientologist. I still believed in it, but I was like, I got to speak out about this disconnection and this corrupt organization. But I still think I, I still think I'm a Scientologist. I was still not quite out all the way. And I was ready, right. I was ready to speak out about the, about the bullshit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, eventually I got through all of it to the point where I rejected the entire thing, but it took time mm -hmm. to get there. Yeah, it does take time, you know, and but that's okay. It's okay. I mean, it's it took a lifetime to indoctrinate you. So yes, exactly. <laughs> give it a minute, you know, yeah. but uh, you're there for sure. And you're, you know, part of the amazing team of brave people who will stand up to the abuse of Scientology, and you should be commended because of it. 
<laughs> so we're going to go ahead and go on to questions unless there's anything else you wanted to cover. No, no. The, we can talk about like chapter two another day because then there's the okay. whole like what happened after that and how did Mike and I get, you know, because now oh, there's people ask, there's, okay, just wait till you see some of the oh, questions. Okay. All right, good. We'll get there. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna be asking. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through here. So sure. uh, apostate Alex, do you want to read them, Christy, while I sure, control? Sure. All the, okay. Amy, thank you for all your support recently. And Christy, thank you for everything you do for Mike. You are both true examples of power women. So sweet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you actually graduate from Delphi with a high school diploma recognized by colleges? This is a question from Jeff. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I can't really say whether a college would recognize it, but they do have a way of, you know, a sneaky way of presenting it like it's a high school diploma. And, it, it you know, it is a high school diploma because they're I guess, accredited enough that they can give you a high school diploma. So um, I think that you could get away with that. I mean, like I said, the education is pretty poor, so. Right, yes it is. Lathonda Grockling, so great to see Christy join the SPTV Wonder Woman League. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> Lots of love from the country that makes me a natural born SP, Germany. Oh yeah, wow. you're automatic. <laughs> <laughs> Destiny Salazar, it's been so amazing to see a Aaron, Claire, Mike, and Leah out there spreading the word wide, the word wide and far about the abuses of Scientology in light of the DM sentencing. Go SPTV. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so awesome. Mm -hmm. Christian B, your brain isn't fully developed at 16. What the fuck, COS? Exactly. I know. I know. <laughs> you're, you're not ready. You're, You're not ready. No, it's actually perfect for Scientology because then yes. you can indoctrinate them and they don't know anything better. Yeah. Destiny Salazar, Amy, every time I see your bookcase full of suppressive memorabilia, it fills me with <laughs> such joy. <laughs> yeah. Every time I get something new from people, I stick it up there too. <laughs> Abigail S. Amy Streamyard has a YouTube channel which has videos to help optimize people's channels. Christy, I wanted to join you in Mike's live stream, but I had my nephews and nieces who don't know Scientology and I want to keep that. Okay. Yeah. No, no worries. Problem. No worries at all. <laughs> <laughs> Use earphones. <laughs> yeah. Joni Cummings. So glad to see Christy Rinder is here. Queen Bee Amy, you're awesome. Thanks for letting us hear these stories. Yes. yes. Our pleasure. Don Larry, heard about you, Amy, from Aaron's channel. So glad. Yeah, thank you for coming over from Aaron's channel. I, I put a little note on there, letting people know, just so just in case they wanted to come and see more SP activity going on. <laughs> Catherine, Catherine, I'm watching on both channels and found Christy at Mike Render YouTube, not Mike's normal channel. I'm the only one over there right now. Yeah, that was yeah. our bad. Yeah, our bad. We figured it out. We made a mistake. So. Sorry, yeah. we'll fix it. Yeah, we'll fix it. Roberta. <laughs> Amy, you're wearing your bracelets. I love you. <laughs> Roberta does these wonderful bracelets. I have SPTV and Team Mike bracelets on right now. <laughs> In so support sweet. of Mike Rinder and Christy. Yay. So sweet. <laughs> okay, so that one's done. There we go. Danielle Chamberlain, question. When did the rule come in re non SO if one had had LSD? Because at St. Mm. Hill, there were definitely ex LSDers in the SO. Yeah, it was yeah. a late, it was a 1979 issue that came out that made it an RPF offense, Rehabilitation Project Force. If you recruited somebody into the Sea Org that had LSD, you could go to the RPF. And that was 1979. Yeah. I remember that because <laughs> I was on yeah. recruitment. <laughs> <laughs> love it question christy do you think going to public school until sixth grade helped with learning history that most kids just in cos schools don't thank you for being on tonight we love you so sweet um maybe yeah i mean i think going to public school was just a good experience because i got to get out of the scientology bubble and like be with regular people and learn all kinds of you know normal life things that you learn at public school. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, 
And history, I mean, you know, they, they did teach us history in the Scientology schools. I remember doing history classes. Um, so I learned them in both places. We did do, we did do some history. <laughs> yeah. Wonder Woman. Christy, question. When you were in public school, did you feel different from others? Example, difference between public versus Scientology vocabulary. Absolutely. I mean, in public school, in anything, anywhere I went, I felt different because I was different. You know, it was yeah. like people would ask you, uh, you know, what's your religion? And I was not very often want to answer, but sometimes I would say, well, we're Scientologists. And it was like, what's that? And that's weird. Yeah. And, um, or when I was a young sort of maybe 11, 12, I remember at a friend's house, there was a guy there who was really like kind of, um, her, kind of not harassing, but like, really pushing me like, well, what is it all about? And like kind of making me feel bad about it. And I'm just a kid. I don't like, I'm trying sort of trying to defend it and sort of trying to just get out of the conversation because I don't know how to defend it. I'm just a kid, you know? You no, know, how do you even describe it? I mean, Scientologists, they say they have this rote thing. It's an applied religious philosophy. Okay. What does that mean? I right. don't know. What do you believe in? And like, and people would hear stuff and I'd like, they would hear stuff before I heard it. I never heard any of this stuff. What do you mean aliens? We don't have aliens. I never heard anything about aliens while I was in Scientology. I didn't know anything. I'm like, what are you talking about? So it was yeah. easy for me to say, yeah, that's not true. Cause I never right. even heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get to, you don't get to hear about that until you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in many, many years. Yeah. <laughs> Stacy, why? Chrissy, think we could get Marilyn to get you the Xenu outfit, but she'd have to do a lot of crocheting to fit your Rinder doll. <laughs> Cause your Rinder doll is life size. <laughs> uh, I can just picture Mike in a crocheted Xenu outfit. We did do, we'll have to show pictures. We did do Halloween um, alien costumes of like five years ago. And oh, they got, fun. they were so popular. So the, oh, we have yeah. cute photos of me and Mike dressed up as, um, Lord and Lady Zenu. <laughs> oh, perfect. How perfect is that? That's fun. Joni Cummings, my question is for Christy. Christy, have you thought about having your own channel? Um, no, not really. <laughs> I haven't. You. I'm happy to be a guest on Mike's channel. I'm, I'm like uh, pretty focused on running my business and I'm happy to, I love doing this and, um, but I don't think I'm going to create my own channel. Well, well, you don't I'll need to have your own channel. We'll, yeah. we'll have you on, you'll have, we'll have you on our channels all the time and Mike yeah. will have you on his all the time too. So yeah, I'll just support Mike. I'll be, I'll try yeah. next time. I'll get it right and get it on the right channel for Mike. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no problem at all. It said Mike, I didn't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> yeah. KB question, Christy, where have you been all our lives? You're a natural for SPTV. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So sweet. <laughs> Ron just made it here. I have so much for you both. I have so much for you both for standing up to the cult. Christy, so glad to be hearing more of your story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Ron, I have so much respect for you both. Okay. Yes. Thank yes. You, Ron. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so this was a clarification saying your computer microphone is working, not your good one. I think it's the static electricity zapped your big microphone. You're really echoing after you hit it or oh, shocked the sorry. mic. So yeah, sorry. it's okay. It's okay. Everyone was saying, stop saying that because- This one looks like it's just fine. Look, it's got all these cool colors and everything. There it does. Yeah, boy, that looks it's, seriously official. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a techie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's no problem. And then I'll just come by, you know, and we'll get everything hooked up perfect or whatever. Or Mike, Mike can do that too. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, okay, so. Rain, Ray Lane came to SPTV because of the guys, Aaron, Mike, and Mark. Keep coming back because of the amazing women, Amy, Claire, and now Christy. Love Matt too. So sweet. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Matt's got some more stuff that he's going to be covering this new week, which will be good. He's got great stories. Yeah, he does. <laughs> EA question. Why do you think Chrissy got to go out of the country with her husband and so many other couples were split up? Hmm. So, I mean, couples were split up often, but sometimes couples weren't split up. Sometimes they were sent yeah. together to different places. And um, so we were, yeah, we were sent to, to Africa together. We met 
in East US where I, in New York, where I was posted. And then after that, they kept us together, which was nice mm -hmm. and, I, until they didn't keep us together. <laughs> until, they, <Yeah. laughs> until they separated us for months and months mm. while I was being sex checked while he was getting sex checked. So um, right. we also, yeah, it changes. Yeah. yeah. We also were able to take a couple of leave of absences, which is rare. And I think it's because partly because they sent us to Africa, which is so far away that they were like, they didn't want us to be unhappy being in Africa either. So to keep us yeah. happy, so far away from everyone else, they mm -hmm. let us come home now and again so that we yeah. wouldn't eventually just protest the whole thing and be like, we don't want to be in Africa because being in Africa was yeah. not the easiest thing to, not the no. easiest place to be. It was right. very unestablished. Like I said, there was, it was not a nice, a nice place to live. The, the buildings, the birthing, the food, the money, the quality of everything yeah. was pretty shitty. So no, I think you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I think they were trying to keep us from wanting to quit that whole Africa project by yeah. Letting us come home now and again. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Gerald Neal, I'm impressed how well SPTV folks handle live stream tech. It's better than most YouTubers. Well, I made a few mistakes tonight. So thanks, Gerald, oh. for thanks for forgiving and, me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's better than most YouTubers. You're you're good. That was I did the best I could. Did. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> I'll get better no at it. <laughs> Cody Mac. Question, Amy, I wanted to know how you would describe an assignment of lower conditions and what is involved in getting back to normal. Thank you both so much. You are truly heroes in many ways. Hi, Cody Mack. Well, you know, it's it totally varies depending on how uh, abusive your boss is that assigned the condition. Um, but oh, there's a whole explanation for it. But basically, if you're assigned a lower condition, um, you're going to have to do all the steps of each formula because each condition has a formula and there's many steps to do. So you do those steps and get approval to get out of it until you come up the conditions to normal. Anyway, there's a lot to describe about that, but that's an overview. What do you think, Christy? Yeah, there's so many steps and the steps are not easy. And like sometimes, yeah. you, you know, you have to make amends and you have to, uh, you know, like deliver an effective blow, which means like you have to like hurt the enemies of the church in order to be yeah. complete your conditions and you have to get people's signatures, you yeah. know, to let you back in the group. And it's, it's, a, there's a lot. So and amends kind of, all through the night because yeah. you have to do amends on your own time and you don't have any own time except for when right. your head's on the pillow. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, many sleepless nights doing those stupid things. <laughs> Kimberly Stovall, are you proud of anything from time in COS? Love you both. Proud. Proud of surviving. <laughs> proud. You know, That's a tough question. Um, you know, like you should be proud of the project that you got done in Johannesburg, but then at the same time, and I should be proud of the, you know, building of Celebrity Center, but then I take a look at, okay, then that was used to bring in celebrities who then the mouthpiece and spokesperson of Scientology, which then gives legitimacy to Scientology. So I'm not proud of that, you know? So things that when you're in there, you thought you did well, you know, yeah. didn't necessarily have a good effect overall, right? <laughs> No, it didn't. Definitely didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, at the time, though, there's definitely some personal pride when you are set to do something and you accomplish it. Yeah. Um, and there's something to be said for anyone who can accomplish a goal, you know, whatever the goal yeah. is. <laughs> Not that you want to do that in the same way again. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. Some of the things we did were impossible and we did them. Yeah. And the, the, the things that ex your members are capable of are sometimes mind blowing. So yeah. Um, yeah. no, not really proud, but definitely right. uh, you learn a lot of grit and a lot of there's, there's something that comes out of it that sort of builds you up in some ways. Yeah. It's, it's good and bad. So the, mostly right. bad, mostly bad. Let me yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, I could talk a whole, the whole time on just that subject probably. Yes, Cause that, yes. that's a good question. It is. Yes. <laughs> Stella, Christy is a great storyteller. Thank you, Stella. Yes, she is. <laughs> Let's see. Timothy Mick question. Could you tell us how you met and fell in love with Mike? Yeah. <laughs> um, Mike is so easy to fall in love with. So I just have to say, as we all know, we all love Mike. Um, 
we it's really a simple story and i think we mike and i did quickly talk about it on the last one of our recent videos but we were introduced by a mutual friend named hayden james um, mike came here for a job he came to clearwater from denver and um hayden told him about me and then he picked me up with hayden and we drove out to visit tom devok to have lunch and it was all just like lunch. We're all just having lunch because we're all ex Org members that are in the same town. And we're getting like, I hadn't met Tom. I hadn't met Mike. Well, I'd met Mike once. That's it. And I knew who he was because he's famous. He's He was a top executive that everybody knew who he was. Um, so it was just kind of lunch and it was just a simple lunch, um, but it was nice. And um, and then after that, I got a text from Hayden saying, Mike wants to see you again. <laughs> So I was like, okay. Um, and then he was like, am I allowed to give him your phone number? And I was like, okay, uh -huh. sure. So he gave my, my phone number. And then we had another lunch or dinner together with some other friends too. And Mike was very charming. And I uh, he started texting me. And um, he was pretty flirtatious, pretty rapidly <laughs> flirtatious <laughs> with me. And I was like, I was like, okay, I want to know what this is. Like, are we just friends or what? So I, being who I am, I just straight up asked him. I said, are you flirting with me on, <laughs> on text? I said, Mike, are you flirting with me? <laughs> and he was like, yes, I am. I, uh -huh. Did I offend you? And I was like, no, I just wanted to know what's going on here. I just wanted to make sure I understood the what was going down right now. <laughs> Yes. Uh -huh. And um, so, yeah. And so then we just kept seeing each other until pretty much we became a couple. And oh. that's it. And I Wonderful. dubbed him Mr. Charming. <laughs> yes. Yes. People call him on, on SPTV the Silver Fox all the time. Yes. He's the Silver <laughs> Fox and he's Mr. Charming. And right. yes, Mike, someone mm -hmm. says, Mike has game. Yes, Mike has game. <laughs> he, was, he was very good. He swept me off my feet. He was with the Australian accent. And I was like, just keep talking. I'll just listen. Yes. I love it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, oh, we were, I love that story. We, yeah. And we just got along great. Like we also yeah. just have a really good friendship and um, Mike is just so lovable. So yeah. I, I adore Mike. He is, yeah. it was a, it was a really good time for us to meet. Um, so yeah. it, it worked out really well. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fabulous. I'm so happy for both of you. I, you know, I love you both. <laughs> we love you. Yeah, thank you. I know. Destiny Salazar. Christy, you've impacted so many more lives than was ever possible when you were in Scientology. Way to go. I'm so happy for you. Thank you so much, Destiny. I appreciate yeah. that. That is true. <laughs> Joni Cummings, Christy, you're an amazing woman. Thank you for sharing your, Amy, you're awesome. And yay, more beautiful people speaking out. Thank you, Joni. Yes. <laughs> the more the merrier. Brett Grace, I've always been curious about your story, Christy. Hope to see you in lots more SPTV. Thank yes. you. I did, yeah. um, you know, so my story was, parts of my story are in that New York Times article, are in the, um, <clears throat> Where else was it? Then I went and did that little tiny Today Show interview. Yeah. If you find those, you can find them on YouTube. You'll see I'm still I still believe in Scientology at the time, but I'm speaking out. And then um, and then I did I did a quite a bit of recording for the aftermath, but they kind of cut a lot of it, and so I'm not yeah. really in that very much. And then yeah. I and did you, def a whole you definitely appeared in there though. I appeared, yeah, yeah a little yeah. bit. And then I was also on Mike and Leah's blog. I mean, sorry, Mike and Leah's podcast. So the Fair right. Game podcast mm -hmm. from iHeartRadio, there's a whole interview with, and again, I sort of talk a lot about my story in that as well. We covered the disconnection. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 No, that's wonderful. And Christy, it's just been amazing having you on tonight. Thanks for having me, Amy. <laughs> yes, of course. And, you know, we could talk, do deep dives in all kinds of different um, parts of that story, too. I had to restrain myself from going, ooh. ooh. Yeah. I know. I was afraid. That's why I was like, how many weeds do we want to get into here? What weeds are we, what stories are we doing? But 
Hopefully it was, you did the, hopefully perfect it was good. Amount. You did the perfect <laughs> amount of weeds. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, and everyone watching, there, there's been over a thousand, like a thousand sixty two, a thousand eighty, probably, you know, or more watching uh, this live. Thank you so much for being with us this whole time and hearing our stories um, and giving all of us the encouraging words and everything. Thank you, Anne, for that super sticker that just came in. Um, and Mike is saying that there's a new Leah and Mike video, which is going to be available on his real YouTube channel at 10 PM. So everyone, please make sure to see that. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, if you're not subscribed to Mike's real channel, <laughs> go over there and subscribe. And, um, if you are not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that as well. And, uh, make sure to like these videos. It really helps. More Thanks, later, everyone. everyone. More later. Bye, everyone. Bye.